the television premiere of the acclaimed Broadway production of Eugene O'Neill's masterly play of Old Sorrow, written in tears and blood. Long Day's Journey into Night, directed by Jonathan Miller. The production you're about to see happened in the way that so many things do in the theatre. It has to say, almost by accident. I was passing through New York on a visit, and I met a producer who said that he had the rights to Eugene O'Neill's Long Day's Journey into Night, and he asked me, out of curiosity, who I would cast in the main part. Well, I was quite surprised to find myself saying, almost immediately, that Jack Lemon would be wonderful. And I went on to say that if Lemon would consider doing it, I might even come back into the theatre and do the production myself. Well, I didn't think about it again until Lemon rang me two days later and asked me if I was serious. Well, if you are, I am, I said. And so, some months later, I found myself doing this enormous play. Well, partly because its title gives a reputation for enormous length, Americans who see it as a great emblematic masterpiece tend to regard its length and its slowness as part of its greatness. I think it's because they mistake it for a Greek tragedy in modern dress. But as far as I could tell, it's a fast-moving black farce about family friction and above all about the difficulty of listening to people who live in the same family. And we found, as we rehearsed it, that by playing the work as if it was a conversation rather than an oratorio with people interrupting one another, speaking at the same time and so on, it became much livelier and mysteriously lost almost an hour of its traditional running time. Well, predictably, American critics thought that this diminished the majestic importance of the work. But English audiences, who are less impressed by portentous slowness, found this rather attractive. Well, naturally, it was a great joy working with Jack Lemmon. So in some ways, the performance that pleased me almost as much was that of Bethel Leslie in her portrayal of Mary Tyrone. Now, this part is traditionally played as a fey victim, but Miss Leslie represented her, I think for the first time, as one of those dreadful invalids who tyrannizes a family by manipulating the guilt of everyone around her. Well, I hope you enjoyed the production as much as I enjoyed working on it. You're a fine armful now, Mary, with that 20 pounds you gave. I've gotten too fat, you mean, dear. I really ought to reduce it. None of that, my lady. You're just right, and we're going to have no talk of reducing. <laughs> Is that why you had so little at breakfast? So little? I thought I ate a lot. No, uh, you didn't. Not as much as I'd like to see you, anyway. Oh, you. You think everybody ought to eat the enormous breakfast you do. No one else in the world could without dying of indigestion. <laughs> I hope I'm not as much a glutton as that sounds. Thank God I've kept my appetite, Mary. I have the digestion of a young man of 20, even if I am 65. You surely have, James. No one could deny that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why do the boys stay in the dining room? I wonder, Kathleen must be waiting to clear the table. Oh, well, there's some secret confab I'm not supposed to be in on, I guess. Yeah, they're probably cooking up some new scheme to touch the old man. Huh? Oh, there is nothing like that first after breakfast cigar, Mary, if it's a good one. Huh? This latest lot seems to have the right mellow flavor. The old good bargain on them, too. I got them dirt cheap. McGuire put me on to them. I hope he also didn't put you onto a new piece of property. His real estate bargains don't turn out so well. I wouldn't say that, Mary. Now, he advised me to buy that property on Chestnut Street. Yeah, and a quick turnover. Nice profit. I know. Me. The famous yeah. one stroke of good luck. I'm sure McGuire never dreamed. <laughs> never mind, James. I know it's a waste of breath trying to convince you you're not a cunning real estate speculator. I have no such idea, Mary. I do know land is land. Dear. Yeah. 
better than the stocks and bonds of those Wall Street swindlers. They can, well, let's not argue about business. James, it's Edmund, you should scold for not eating enough. He hardly touched a thing but coffee. And he uh, needs to eat to keep up his strength. I, I keep telling him that, but he, he says he simply has no appetite. Well, of course, if something takes away your appetite like a bad summer cold. But yeah, it, it's totally natural. Yeah, don't let it worry you, dear. Well, I'm not worried. I know he'll be all right in a few days if he takes care of himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it does seem a shame he should have to be sick right now. Yeah, well, it is bad luck, but don't let it upset you, dear. Now, remember, you must I'm take care of upset. yourself. I'm not upset. There's nothing to be upset about. What makes you think I'm upset? Well, nothing. You just seemed a little on edge the last few days. I have. Yeah. Nonsense, dear. It's your imagination. Yeah. But you really must not watch me all the time, James. It makes me self-conscious. So Mary, now, but that's your imagination. If I've been watching you, dear, it's only to admire how fat and beautiful you've become. <laughs> oh, Mary, Mary. I cannot tell you the deep happiness it brings me to see you as you are since you're back with us. Oh, my darling, your dear old self. You keep up the good work, Mary. Oh, I oh, will, dear. All right. Well, thank heavens the fog is gone. I do feel out of sorts this morning. I wasn't able to sleep much with that awful foghorn oh, going all night long. But that's like having a sick whale in your backyard. <laughs> it kept me awake, too. It did? Uh -huh. You had a strange way of showing your restlessness. You were snoring so hard, I couldn't tell which was a foghorn. Oh, nonsense. Ten foghorns couldn't disturb you. You had oh. a nerve in you you've never had. You always exaggerate my snoring. I couldn't, if you can only hear yourself <laughs> once. Uh, uh, What's the joke, I wonder? Yeah, I don't know, but it's on me. I will bet that is always one on the old man, Oh, yes, it's it? terrible the way we all pick on you. You're so abused. Uh, it's just one of Jamie's jokes. He's forever making sneering fun of something. It doesn't matter what the one. joke is about. It's a relief to hear Edmund laugh. He's been so down on the mouth lately. And don't start in on poor Jamie, dear. He'll turn out all right in the end. You wait and he see. He better start soon. He's going to be 34. Oh, good heavens, are they going to stay in the dining room all day? Edmund, Jamie, come in the living room. Give Kathleen a chance to clear <laughs> oh, the table. Oh, you would excuse him, no matter what he oh, did. shush. Ah. I've been teasing your father about his snoring. I'll leave it to the boys, James. They must have heard you. Well, not you, Jamie. I heard you down the hall almost as bad as your father. You, you like him. The minute your head touches the pillow, you're off. And ten foghorns couldn't wake you. Oh, 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 yeah. What are you staring at, Jamie? <gasps> I, is my hair coming down? It's hard for me to put it up properly now. My eyes are so bad, and I can never find my glasses. Your hair's all right, Mom. I was only thinking how well you look. I always just say the same thing, Jamie. She's getting so fat and sassy, there'll soon be no holding her. <laughs> you certainly look grand, Mama. I'll back you up about Papa's snoring, guys. Oh, I heard him, racket. too. The more I know his If trumpet. it takes my snoring to make you remember Shakespeare... Jamie, you must have seen all the boys sitting after breakfast. Your give it a father rest, wasn't finding fault with you. You don't always have to take Jamie's side. You think he was the one ten years old. What's all the fuss about? Let's forget it. Oh, yes, let's forget it. Forget it, face nothing. Oh, That's James, a convenient philosophy. Right. There's no ambition. You, yeah. you must have gotten on the wrong side of the bed this <laughs> morning. Well, what were you two grinning about like Cheshire Cats when you came in? Yes, that's Ed, Ed, do. Ed, uh, let us in. Uh, I was telling your mother, I'm sure it's one on me, but that's all right. I'm now, don't look it. at me. This is the kid's story. Oh, I meant to tell you last night, Papa, and I forgot it. Uh, yesterday, when I went for a walk, I dropped in at the inn. You shouldn't drink And now, who do you think you? I met there with a beautiful bun on but Shaughnessy, the tenant on oh, that farm? Oh, that dreadful man, but he is funny. He, he, is, he is. is not funny if you're his landlord. Oh, he is a wild man. Shandy, he is. Mick. He is. Well, he could hide behind a corkscrew. What was he complaining about? He probably wants his rent lowered. Oh, no, he didn't beef about anything. He was so pleased with life, he even bought a drink, and that's practically uh. unheard of. <laughs> 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 it's delighted, because he'd had a fight with your friend Harker, the standard oh, oil Lord millionaire, and won a glorious victory. Yeah. Yeah, I'll bet the next time you see Harker at the club and give him the old respectful bow, he won't see you. Oh, yeah, Harker will think you're no gentleman for harboring a... A tenant who isn't humble in the presence of a, a king of America. Never mind the socialist. Oh, Edmund, devil. go on with your story. Yeah. Well, you remember the ice pond on Harker's estate is right next to the pond. Yeah. And you remember the Shaughnessy keeps pigs. Oh, well, it oh, seems there's a break in the fence, and the pigs have been bathing in the millionaire's ice pond. What? And Harker's foreman told him he was sure Shaughnessy had broken the fence on purpose to give his pigs a free wallow. Oh, so, I'm sure he so, did. It's just like him. Oh, it is just like him. Harker he... came in person to rebuke Shaughnessy. A very bonehead play. If, if I needed any further proof, our ruling plutocrats, uh, 
especially the ones who inherited their boodle and not mental <laughs> giants. Would you, would you keep it. those socialist remarks to yourself, please? Now, tell me what happened. Parker had as much chance as I would with Jack Johnson. Sean, as he got a few drinks under his belt, and he was waiting at the gate to welcome him. He told me he never gave Harker a chance to open his mouth. He began by shouting. He was no slave Standard Oil could trample on. He was a king of Ireland if he had his rights, and scum was scum to him no matter how much money it had stolen from the poor. Yeah, court. then he accused and, uh, Harker. Then he accused Harker of making his foreman break down the fence to entice the pigs into the ice pond in order to destroy them. The poor pigs, Sean, as he yelled, had caught their death of cold. Many of them were dying of pneumonia. Several others had been taken down with cholera from drinking the poisoned water. Mm. That's a cow. Sorry. He, told, he, to, he told Harker he was hiring a lawyer to sue him for damages. And he wound up by saying he ha had to put up with poison ivy, ticks, potato bugs, snakes, and skunks on his farm, but he was an honest man who drew the line somewhere, and he'd be damned if he'd stand for a standard oil thief trespassing. So would Harker kindly remove his dirty feet from the premise? <laughs> Harker did. No, he, he stick the dog on him first. Uh, <laughs> oh, that laggard, he could be getting me involved in a lawsuit. I hope you told him I'd be mad as hell if he would. Well, I told him you'd be tickled to death over the great oh, Irish victory. I so am you not are. tickled to oh, death. Oh, stop yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, 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 listen. listen. I told Shaughnessy he should have reminded Harker that a standard oil millionaire ought to welcome the flavor of hog in his ice waters and appropriate... Oh, would you? <laughs> Keep those socialist anarchist sentiments out of my business. What the hell are you laughing at? Shaughnessy almost wept because he hadn't in. thought of that one. What kind of a son are you getting me involved in a lawsuit? Sure, I bet you were. You, you regret being there to prompt Shaughnessy in the further insult. He has a fine time oh, for Pop, it. I should think he gets sick of hearing yourself. Edmund James! What? You mustn't mind, Evan. <coughs> Remember, he isn't well. Summer cold makes anybody irritable. It's not just a cold. He's got the kid as damn sick. Why do you say that? Oh, it God. is just a cold. No, anybody no, no, no. can see Jenny, that. You always imagine things. The, the lad caught a little something that made the cold seem worse. Sure, Mama. That's all I meant. Yeah, but Dr. Hardy said oh, he might just Hardy, be a touch of the malaria fever. He's going to be sworn a sack of Bibles. I know what doctors are. They're all alike. They'll do anything. They don't care what to keep you coming to... What is it? What are you looking at? Is my hair coming no, down? No, there's nothing wrong with your hair, my lady. The fatter and healthier you get, Mary, the vainer you become. Then pretty soon you'll be spending half the day primping in front of a mirror. Well, I really ought to have new glasses. My eyes are so oh, bad oh, now. You have the most beautiful eyes in the world, and oh, well, you James, know it. you mustn't be so silly right in front of Jamie. Oh, nonsense. He knows. He knows all that fuss about the hair and eyes. You're fishing for compliments, Mary. Uh, Jamie? Yeah, you can't kid us, Mama. Yeah. I'll go along with both of you. But I did truly have beautiful hair once, didn't oh, I, Jamie? The most beautiful in the world. It was a rare shade of reddish-brown, and it was so long it came down below my knees. Yes, yes, yes. You ought to remember it, Jamie. I didn't have a, a single gray hair till after Edmund was born. Then it began to turn white. That made it all the prettier. Will you listen to your father after 35 years of marriage? He's not a great actor for nothing, is he? Oh, thank you. Put out the lights. What's come over you, James? Are you pouring coals of fire in my head for teasing you about snoring? Yes. And I take it all back. It must have been only the foghorn uh, I heard. Uh, uh, <laughs> ah, well. I can't stay here and to hear compliments. I'm a sea cook at that dinner in the day's market. Oh, Bridget. Mm. She is so lazy and so sly. She keeps telling me all about her relatives. I can't get a word in edgeways to uh, scold her. Uh, oh, well, I might as well get it over with. James, uh, yeah. you mustn't make Evan work on the grounds with you today. Please. Remember, it's not that he's not strong enough, but he'd perspire and, and he might catch more yeah. cold. Oh, my, you are one fine lunkhead, aren't you? Don't you have any sense? The one thing to avoid is saying anything that would upset her more over Red. All right, have it your way. I think it's the wrong idea to let Mama go on kidding herself. It'll only make this shock worse when she has to face it. Anyway, you can see she's deliberately fooling herself with that summer cold talk. She knows better. Nobody knows well, yet. Well, I do. I was with Edmund when he went to see Doc Hardy on Monday. I heard him pull that touch of malaria stuff. He was stalling. That isn't what he thinks anymore. You know it as well he as I do. He knows nothing for you sure. You talked to him when he went yet. uptown yesterday. He, he called me today before. He, he thinks it's consumption, it. doesn't he? He thinks it might be consumption. Damn it. Oh, poor kid. Yeah, it might never have happened if you sent him to a real doctor when he first oh, got sick. What's wrong with Hardy? Everything's Always wrong with him. Even in this sector, he's rated third class. Run him down. Run everybody down. Hardy only charges a dollar. That's that is enough. He's such a fine doctor. 
you're not drunk now, there's no excuse. Hmm? If you mean I can't afford one of those fine You can't afford. Doctors, you're one of the biggest property owners around here. That doesn't mean I'm here. rich. So a mortgage. Because you always buy more instead of paying off oh, mortgages. Shut up. If Edmund was a lousy acre of land she wanted, the sky would be the limit. That is a lie. All those sneers against Hardy, they're lies. The, the man may not put on frills, you know, have an office in some desirable location, drive one of those damned expensive automobiles. That is what you oh, pay all right. for when you go to those to argue. five dollars to look at your dumb You fellows. can't change the leopard spots. No. No, you can't. You taught me the lesson all too well. I've given up hope that you will ever change yours. <laughs> How dare you tell me what I can, can afford. afford. You have never known, known the value of a dollar, and you, you never, never, never will. You never will. You're penniless at the end of every season. Just thrown your weekly salary away My on whores, <laughs> whiskey. It's more than you're worth. And you wouldn't get that if it weren't for me. <laughs> My God, if you weren't my son, there isn't a manager in the business to give you a part. Your reputation stinks so. And as it is, I have to go in and humble my pride, beg for you. Say, oh, he's turned over a new leaf. I know that's a lie. I never wanted to be an actor. You forced me onto the stage. That is a lie. You never wanted to look for anything yourself. You just left it to me to get you a job. I have no influence except, except in, in the, the theater. I forced you. <laughs> you never wanted to do anything but loaf in a bar. You'd be content to sponge off me for the rest of your damn life. Oh, the money I've wasted on your education. All oh, you've for God's done sake, Papa, don't drag up that ancient from every history. No, it is not ancient history that you come home every summer to live on me. I earn my board and lodgings working on the grounds. It you saves have to you be hiring driven to do even that. Burns is bored and lucky. I wouldn't give one damn, you know, if you ever showed the slightest sign of gratitude. Eh? Damn it, the only gratitude you've ever shown is to sneer at me as a miser. Sneer, sneer at my, at my profession. profession. Yes, you do. Uh, you sneer at my profession. Sneer at every damn thing in the world except yourself. That's not true, Papa. You can't hear me talking to myself. The ingratitude, the violence. Well, I could see that, that line coming. How many thousands of times? God, if you want, oh, all right, you would Papa. get I'm a bum, you whatever head. you'd like, so long as it stops Instead the argument. Instead of folly. Yeah, let's forget about me. You, know, you are young. I'm not interested you in the subject, you are neither young, are you. You could still make your mark. You had the talent once to be a fine actor. There you have it still. You are my son. What started us on all this? Oh, Doc Hardy. When's he going to call you up about it? Around lunch time. I could not have sent the boy to a finer doctor Let's ever, not lie ever about since it. he was uh. knee high up here. Whenever he's been ill, Hardy has treated so? him. So? He knows his constitution better than any other yeah, doctor right. could. Thank you. Not the case of my being miserly as you would have it. I'd like to know what the finest specialist in America could do for their boy now, eh? Well, he's deliberately ruined his health with that mad life he's led since he was fired from college. I don't really oh, have no, any... Oh, no, no, before college. I mean, oh, yeah. Prep school, he was already dissipating, eh? Trying to play the Broadway sport, imitating you. Well, he never had your constitution to stand it, damn it. You've always been a healthy lung like me. Well... He's, or you were, at his age, but he's... He's always been just like his mother, a bundle of nerves. I told the boy years ago he did not have a body that could stand it. Oh, no, he's not going to heed me. Now it's too late. What, is it? oh. what do you mean, too late? Hmm? You talk as if you thought he was going to... Oh, I am only saying what's plain to anybody. His health is... I know out. it's an Irish peasant idea. Consumption is fatal. It probably is when you live in a hovel on a bog. You but over here with modern... Dirty tongue off Ireland. You talk of bogs and... I think the less you say about that boy's illness, maybe the better for your conscience, eh? That you are the one who is most responsible. That's a lie. I won't it stand for it, Papa. Like he's grown up looking to you as a hero. Oh, what a fine example. You, if you ever advise that boy in anything except the ways of rottenness, I've yet to hear of it. 
You made him old before his time, pumping him full of your idea of worldly wisdom. My God, the boy is too damn young to realize... He's too young to realize that your own failure in life has poisoned your mind. You think that every man is a knave with his soul for sale. Every woman, if she's not a whore, she's a fool. All right. I did put him wise to things. But not until after I'd seen he'd already started to raise hell. And then he'd laugh at me if I tried that good advice older brother stuff. Look, all I did was make him a pal of mine and be absolutely frank so we could learn from my mistakes that... Well, that if you can't be good, at least you can be careful. That's a rotten accusation, Papa. You know how much the kid means to me. No. How close we've always been. I not like not the usual brothers. I'd do anything for him. Besides this damn him. rot. I'd like to see anyone influence Edmund more than he wants to be. His quietness fools people into thinking they can do what they like with him, but he's as stubborn as hell inside. What he does is what he wants to do, and to hell with anyone else. Yeah. What did I do with all the crazy stunts he's pulled over the last few years? Working his way all over the map as a sailor and all that stuff? I thought it was a damn fool idea. I told him so. Oh, damn fool. Yeah. You can't imagine me getting fun out of being on a beach in South America or living in filthy dives drinking rot gut can. You know, thanks. I'll stick to Broadway in a room with a bath and oh, bars yeah, and Sir Bond yes, You and Broadway. That's what made you what you are, you and Broadway. At least the boy has had the guts to go off on his own and not come whining back to me every time he's been broke. Yeah? Well, he's always come home broke finally, hasn't he? And what if he's going away? Get him. Look at him now. Oh, that's a lousy thing to say. I don't... He has that. been doing well on the paper. Oh, a hicktown rag. Whatever bull they hand you, they tell me he's a pretty bum reporter. If he weren't your son, they'd probably fire his ass. What was that? No, that's not true. They're glad to have him. But it's the special stuff that gets him by. Some of the poems and parodies he's written are damn good. Not that they get him anywhere on the big time, but he certainly made a damn good start. Yeah, yes, he's made a damn good start. You used to talk about wanting to be a newspaper man, didn't you? But you didn't want to start Why don't at you the lay bottom, off me? did you? All right. Damn of a luck he should be ill right now. It couldn't come at a worse time. I could put him or your mother. Oh, damn of a she should have this to upset her right now. When she needs peace, freedom from worry. Oh, she has been so well, eh? These two months, and she's back with us. Oh, it's been heaven. Heaven for me. This home has been a home again. I felt the same way, Pop. Just an entirely different woman than those other times. Oh, God, those other times. I mean, this time, she's got control of her nerves. You did have until the boy took ill. But I can... I can feel her. You know, she's... She's growing tense. Frightened underneath. I wish to God that we could keep the truth from her. But we can't. I mean, even... The boy has to go to a sanatorium. And you know what's worse. Her father died at consumption. Well, I know that. Yeah, you know that. Well, she worshipped him, you know. She's never forgotten it. Outside of nerves, she seems perfectly all right this morning. Huh? Oh, yes. Oh, boy, she's never been better. I mean, she's full of fun and mis... Mischief? Well, why do you say that? Why do you say seems? Why shouldn't she be? What the hell are you Don't getting at? Don't start jumping down my throat. Oh, huh? God, Papa. This ought to be one thing we can talk over, frankly, I'm without a battle about that. In them. Just tell me There's what it is. There's nothing to tell you. I was all wrong. Tell me. You just... tell me what it is. Huh? I can't help being suspicious. I can't forget the past any more than you can. That's the hell of it, Papa. It makes right. it hell for Mama. She Would watches us watching her. Can you speak out? Around 3 o'clock this morning, I woke up. And I heard her moving around in the spare room. Is that all? No. Then she went to the bathroom. I pretended to be asleep. She stopped outside of the hallway to listen as if she wanted to make sure she I was. herself a foghorn kept her awake every night since the boy's been ill. She's been up and yeah, down. That's right. She did stop outside his door to listen. It was her being in the spare room that scared me. I couldn't help remembering when she starts sleeping alone in there. It's always been a sign. Well, it's no sign this time. It's easily explained. Where else can she get away from my snoring? My God, how do you live with that mind that always sees the worst well, in everybody? Don't pull that. I just said I was me. all wrong. Don't you suppose I'm as glad of that as you? Yes, I suppose you are. God, it would be like a curse.
because she can't escape. If his illness were to start her, oh. Well, it was right after he was brought into yeah, this well, world. Yeah, well, she didn't have she anything first, to do with it. I am not blaming Then who are you blaming, Edmund, for being born? Nobody was to Oh, the blame, bastard but... of a doctor was. From a oh. mama said he was another cheap quack like Hardy. You wouldn't pay for a first-rate doctor. Wait, 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 wait. I wouldn't pay. Is that what you're getting at? That I am to blame, you evil-minded loafer? Well, if we're going to get to work on the front hedge today, we'd better get going. What? Oh, look, much too nice a morning to sit around arguing with the likes of you, is it? Bob is gone from the harbor. Mary! Oh, uh, Mary, look out the window, dear. I think that bad spell we've had is gone for a while. Oh, I hope so, dear. Did I actually hear you suggesting work in the front heads, Jamie? Well, wonders never cease. You must want pocket money badly. Well, when don't I? I expect a salary of at least one large iron man a week to carouse on. What were you two arguing about? Same old stuff. No, no, no. I heard you mention doctor and your father accusing you of being evil-minded. Oh, that. I was just saying once again, Doc Hardy is in my idea of the world's greatest physician. Oh, no. I wouldn't say he was either. Oh, that Bridget, I thought I'd never get away. She told me all about her second cousin on the police force in St. Louis. <laughs> well, if you're going to work in the heads, why don't you go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, take advantage of the sunshine before the fog comes back. Because I know it will. At least the rheumatism in my hands knows it. It's a better weather prophet than you are, dear. Oh, how ugly he would ever believe they were once oh, beautiful. Oh, Mary, Mary, you have the prettiest hands in the world, and you know it. Now, come on, lad, your mother's right to scold us. Way to start work is to start work. Maybe the hot sun will sweat some of the booze fat off your middle. We're all so proud of you, Mama, so darn happy. But you've still got to be careful. You mustn't worry so much about Edmund. He'll be all right. Of course he'll be all right, and I don't know what you mean, warning me to be careful. All right, Mama, I'm sorry I spoke. There you are. We're just coming upstairs to look for you. Oh, I waited till they went out. I don't want to mix up in any arguments. I feel too rotten. Oh, I'm sure you don't feel half as badly as you make out. You're such a baby. You like to get us all worried so we'll make a fuss over you. All the same, you've gotten much too thin. You need to rest all you can. Sit down. Let me, let me make you comfortable. Mama. Come here. There. How's that? Well, it's grand. Thanks, Mama. Oh, all you need is your mother to nurse you. Big as you are, you're still the baby in the family of me, you know? Well, never mind me. You keep taking care of yourself. That's all that counts. But I, uh, haven't you seen how fat I've gotten? I'll have to let all my dresses out. Oh, they started clipping the hedge. Poor Jamie, how he hates working out front. Everybody passing by can see him. There go the Chatfields and the new Mercedes. It's a beautiful car, isn't it? Not like our second-hand packing. Poor Jamie bent almost under the head so they wouldn't notice him. <laughs> and they bowed to your father, and he bowed back as if he were taking a curtain call. In that filthy old suit, I have tried to make him throw away. Really, he ought to have more pride than to show himself off like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's right not to give a damn what anyone thinks. You. Jamie's the fool to care about the Chatfields. For Pete's sake, who ever heard of them outside this Hickberg? No, and you're quite right, Edmund. Big frogs in a small puddle. It's stupid of Jamie. Still, the Chatfields and people like them stand for something. I mean, they have decent, presentable homes they don't have to be ashamed of. They have friends who entertain them whom they entertain. They're not cut off from everybody. Not that I want anything to do with them. I've always hated this town and everybody in it. You know that. I never wanted to live here in the first place, but your father liked it. Insisted on building this house, and I've had to come here every summer. Well, it's better than spending the summer in a New York hotel, isn't it? Well, this town isn't so bad. I, I like it well enough, I suppose. It's the only home we've had. I never felt it was my home. It was wrong from the start. Everything was done the cheapest possible way. Your father would never spend the money to make it right. Oh, it's just as well we don't have any friends here. I'd be ashamed to have them walk in the door. And he's never wanted family friends. He hates 
calling on people or receiving them. All he likes is to hobnob with men at the club or a bar room. You and Jamie are the same way, but you're not to blame. You've never had a chance to meet decent people here. Oh, Mama, forget it. Who cares? Oh, you both would have been so different if you'd been able to associate with nice people. Oh, Jamie and I'd be bored stiff. You'd never have disgraced yourself so that now no respectable parents... Well, about the old man, what's the use of talking? You can't change Don't him. Don't call your father the old man. You should show more respect. Mama, you got to be fair. It may have been all of his fault in the Sometimes beginning, but you know that lonely. later on, even if you'd wanted to, we couldn't have had people here. I'm... I mean, you wouldn't have wanted them. Please, dear, I can't bear having you remind well, me. Well, don't take it that way, please. I'm trying to help. It, oh. It's it's bad for you to forget, Mama. The right way is to remember, so you'll always be on your guard. You, you know what's happened before. God, I hate to remind you. I'm doing it because it's been so wonderful having you home please, the way you've been. Please, dear, I know you mean it for the for best, you. but... I don't understand why you suddenly say such things. What put it in your mind this morning? Nothing. It's just because I feel rotten and blue, I suppose. Tell me the truth. Why are you suddenly so suspicious? I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. I can feel it. Your father and Jamie, too. Particularly Jamie. Mama, don't start it imagining makes it things. It's so much harder living in this atmosphere of constant suspicion. Knowing you're all spying on That's me. Nothing believes in me or trust me. Mama, we do if trust there's you. There's only some place I could go to get away for a day. Or even an afternoon. Some woman friend I could talk to, Mama. not about anything serious. Mama, you're getting yourself worked up over nothing, Mama. Somebody outside Mama. of the servants, that stupid Kathleen. Your father goes out, he meets his friends at the club or a bar room. You and Jamie know, boys, you go out. But I am alone. I have always been alone. Now, come now, you, you know that's a fib. One of us always stays around to keep you company or, or goes within the because automobile you're when you take a drive. you're afraid to trust me alone. I insist you tell me why you act so differently this morning, why you felt you had to remind me. Stupid. It's just that I, I wasn't asleep when you came in my room last night. You, you didn't go back to your and Papa's room. You went in the spare room for because the rest of the night. Because your father's snoring was driving me crazy. What happens? Haven't I often used the spare room as my bedroom? Did I see what you thought? No, I didn't think anything. So you were pretending to be asleep in order to spy no, on me. I did it because I knew if you found out I was feverish and I couldn't sleep, it would upset you, Mama. Your father was evident I cannot bear it when even you. Serve you all right if it were true. Well, don't say that. That's the way you talk when you're going to go upstairs. Stop me. Please, dear, you hurt me. I, I couldn't sleep because I was thinking about you. That's the real reason. I, I have been so worried since you've been sick. Well, it's foolishness. You know it's only a bad cold. Yes. Of course I know that. Listen, Mama. Oh, I want you to promise me that... Even if it should turn out to be something worse, you know I'll soon be all right again anyway, and you won't worry no, yourself no, I sick. I will not. You keep on taking you care are of so yourself. so silly. There's no reason to talk as if you expected something dreadful. Of course I promise you. I give you my sacred word of honor. I suppose you're remembering I've promised before my word of honor. No. It's all right. I'm not blaming you. How can you forget? How can any of us forget? That's what makes it so hard on all of us. We can't forget. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be gloomy. Never mind me. You're nice and cool. You certainly don't have a fever. Well, forget about me. It's you. But I am quite all right, dear. Except I naturally feel tired and, and nervous this morning after such a bad night. I really ought to go upstairs and lie down until lunch. Take a nap. What will you do, Reed, here? Be much better off out in the fresh air and sunshine. Uh, don't get overheated. Be sure to wear a hat. Or are you afraid to trust me alone? Oh, no, can't you stop talking like that? I, I think you ought to take a nap. Huh? Well, I'll go down and help Jamie bear up. I love to lie in the shade and watch him work. Mama?
there's the whiskey. It'll be lunchtime soon. Will I call your father and Mr. Jamie, or will you? No, you do it. It's a wonder your father wouldn't look at his watch once in a while. He's a devil for making the meals late, and then Bridget curses me as if I was to blame. Ah, oh, but he's a grand, handsome man if he is old. You'll never see the day you're as good-looking, nor Mr. Jamie either. I'll wager Mr. Jamie wouldn't miss the time to stop work and have his drop of whiskey if he had a watch to his name. You win that one. And here's another I'd win. That you're making me call them so you can sneak a drink before they come. I hadn't thought of that, Kathleen. Oh, no, not you. Butter wouldn't melt in your mouth, I suppose. <laughs> now you suggest it. <laughs> I'd never suggest a man or woman such drink, Mr. Edmund. Sure, didn't it kill an uncle of mine in the old country? Still, a drop now and then's no harm when you're in low spirits or have a bad cold. Well, thanks for handing me a good excuse. You better call my mother, too. What for? She's always on time without any calling. God bless her, she has some consideration for the house. She's been taking a nap. She wasn't asleep when I finished my work upstairs a while back. She was lying down in the spare room with her eyes wide open. She had a terrible headache, she said. Well, then just call my father. No wonder my feet kill me each night. I won't walk out in this heat and get sunstroke. I'll call from the porch. Mr. Tyrone! Mr. Jamie! It's time! God, what a wench. Oh, stop it! Snaking one, eh? <laughs> Get out the bluff, kid. You're a rotten rusher than I am. Yeah, I grabbed one while the going was well, that's dead. that's better. Why kid me? We're pals, aren't we? Oh, I wasn't sure it was you coming. Well, I made the old man look at his watch. I was halfway up the walk when Kathleen burst into song. <laughs> Our wild Irish lark, she ought to be a train announcer. That's what drove me to drink. Why don't you sneak one while you got the oh, chance? I was thinking that little thing. The old man was talking to Captain Turner. Yeah. Oh, he's still at it. <coughs> and now, to cover up from his eagle eye, he memorizes the level of a bottle after every drink. There, that fixes it. And there's the water you've been drinking. Oh, fine. You don't think that'll fool him, well, Maybe not, but he can't prove it. <coughs> I hope he doesn't forget about lunch and listening to himself talk. I'm hungry. That's what I hate about working down front. He puts on an act for every damn fool that comes by. Oh, well, you're in luck to be hungry. Oh, the way I feel, I don't care if I ever eat again. Listen, kid, you know me. I've never lectured you, but Dr. Hardy was right when he told you to cut out the red eye. I'm going to. After he hands me the bad news this afternoon. A few before then won't make any difference. I'm glad you got your mind prepared for bad news. It won't be such a jolt. I mean, it's a sense you're really sick. You'd be the wrong dope to kid yourself. I'm not. I know how rotten I feel. And the fever and chills I get at night are no joke. I think Dr. Hardy's last guess must be right of me. It must be the damn malaria come back on me. Yeah, maybe, but don't be too sure. Why, what do you think it is? Hell, how do I know? I'm no doc. Where's Mama? Upstairs. When did she go up? Uh, about the time I came down to the hedge, I guess. She said she was going to take a nap. You didn't tell me. Why, why should I? She was tired out. She didn't get much sleep last night. I know she did. The didn't. damn foghorn kept me awake, too. She's been upstairs alone all morning, huh? You haven't seen her? No. I've been reading here. I thought I'd give her a chance to sleep. Is she coming down to lunch? Of course. No, of course about it. She might not want any lunch. She might start having most of her meals alone upstairs. That's happened, you hasn't shut it? Shut up, can't you think? Well, you, you're all wrong to suspect anything. Kathleen saw her not long ago. Mama didn't say she wouldn't be oh, down oh, to lunch. Oh, that she wasn't taking a nap. No, not right then, but she was lying down. In the Kathleen. spare room, yes. you damn fool. Why did you leave her alone so long? Why didn't you stick around? Because she accused me and you and Papa of spying on her all the time and not trusting her. She made me feel ashamed. I know how rotten it must be for her, and she promised on her sacred oh, you word you want to know that just doesn't mean anything. Well, it does this That's time. That's a wake up the other times. <laughs> Listen, kid, I know you think I'm a cynical bastard, but remember, I've seen a lot more of this game than you have. 
You never knew what was really wrong until you were in prep school. Pop and I kept it from you, but I was wise ten years or more before we had to tell you. Oh, yeah. I know the game backwards. Yeah, and I've been yeah, thinking yeah. all morning of the way she acted last night when she yeah, thought we were asleep. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been able to think of anything else. And now you tell me she's got you to leave her alone upstairs you all didn't morning. You not to do anything. You're crazy. All right, don't start a battle with me. <laughs> I hope as much as you do, I'm crazy. I've been happy as hell because this time I've really begun to believe that she'd lift it cold. She's coming downstairs. She went on that one. I guess I'm a damn suspicious louse. Christ, I wish I'd grabbed another drink. Me too. You shouldn't talk like that. It's bad for your throat. You don't want to get a sore throat on top of a cold. I am always picking on you. Don't do this. Don't do that. Forgive me, dear. It's just that I want to take care of you. I know that. How about you? Mm -hmm. Do you feel rested? Oh, yes, ever so much better. I've been lying down since you went out. It's what I needed after such a restless night. I don't feel nervous now. That's fine. Good heavens, how down on the mouth you look, Jamie. What's the matter now? Nothing. Oh, I forgot you've been working on the front heads. That accounts for you sinking into the dumps, doesn't it? If you want to think so, Mama. Well, that's the effect it always has, isn't it? You're such a baby. Isn't he, Edmund? Well, he's certainly a fool to care when anyone thinks. Yes. The only way is to make yourself not care. Where's your father? I heard Kathleen call him. Oh, he's gabbing with old Captain Turner, Jamie says. He'll be late as usual. She must go down to where he is and tell him. The idea of screaming is that this were a cheap boarding house. She's down there now interrupting the famous beautiful voice. She should show more respect. It's you who should show more respect. Stop sneering at your father. I won't have it. You ought to be proud you're his son. He may have his faults. Who hasn't? But he has worked hard all his life. He has made his way up from ignorance and poverty to the top of his profession. Everybody else admires him. And you should be the last one to sneer. You, who thanks to him, have never had to work hard in your life. Remember, Jamie, your father's getting old. You ought to show a little consideration. I ought to. Dry up. For peace sake, Mama, why jump on Jamie all of a sudden? Because he's always sneering at someone else. Always looking for the worst weakness in everyone. I suppose life has done that to him and he can't help it. None of us can help the things that life has done to us. They're done before you realize it. And once they're done, they make you do other things until finally everything's between you and what you'd like to be and you've lost your true self forever. I'm hungry. I wish the old man would get a move on. It's a rotten trick the way he keeps meals waiting and then beats because they're spoiled. Yes, it's very trying, Jamie. You don't know how trying. You don't have to keep house with summer servants who don't care because they know it's not a permanent position. The good servants are all with people who have homes, not merely summer places. Your father won't even pay the wages a good summer help has to. Every year I have stupid, lazy greenhorns to deal with. I know you've heard me say this a thousand times. So is he, that it goes in one ear and out the other. He thinks money spent on a home is money wasted. He's lived too long in hotels. Not the best hotels, of course. Second-rate hotels. He doesn't understand a home. He doesn't feel at home in it. If he wants a home, he's even proud of having this shabby place. He loves it here. It's funny, when you come to think of it, he's a very peculiar man. What makes you ramble on like that, Mama? Nothing in particular, dear. It is foolish. Lunch is ready, Mom. I went down to Mr. Tyrone like you ordered, and he said he'd come right away. But he kept on talking to that man, telling him of the All time. right, Kathleen. Tell Bridget I'm sorry, but you'll have to wait a few more minutes till Mr. Tyrone is here. Yes, Mom. Damn it, why don't you go ahead without him? He's told us to. He doesn't mean it. Don't you know your father yet? He'd be so terribly hurt. Oh, I'll make him get a move on. Hey, Papa! Come on! We can't wait all day! What are you staring at, Jamie? You know. I don't know. Oh, for God's sake, Mama. You think you can fool me? I'm not blind. I don't know what you're talking about. No? Take a look at your eyes in the mirror. Oh. Well, I got Papa moving. He'll be here in a minute. What happened? What's the matter, Mama? His brother ought to be ashamed of himself for even insinuating I don't know what. You bastard. Oh, stop this instant. How dare you use language like that in front of me? 
wrong to blame your brother. He can't help being what the past has made him any more than your father can, or you, or I. Well, he's a liar, Mama. It's a lie, isn't it? What's a lie? Now you're talking in riddles like Jamie. Edmund, don't. Oh, there's your father. I must tell Bridget. Well? Well, what? You're a liar. Well, here comes Papa. Yeah. <laughs> I hope he loosens up with the old bottle. Bye-bye, uh, no, Captain. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm late for lunch, lads. I got Captain Turner stop to talk. Once he starts gabbing, there's no getting away from you him. You mean once uh... he starts listening? It's all right. The level in the bottle hasn't changed. Oh, I wasn't noticing that, Jimmy B. As if it would do any good with you or Ernie. I'm on to your tricks. Did I hear you uh, say, let's all have a drink? Uh, uh, Jamie is welcome after his hard morning's work, eh? But I'm not inviting you, lad. Dr. Hardy well, said that your Dr. Hardy, one drink is going to kill me. Oh, I right, feel all on, in. Right. Come on, then. It is before a meal, eh? I have found that a drop of good... <clears throat> whiskey... Taken in moderation as an appetizer before a meal is the best of tonics. I said in moderation. My God, saying moderation in front of you two is a waste of breath. Health and happiness. And... Oh, that's a joke. Ah, what is? Nothing. Here's how. Oh, Mother <laughs> Did you... Uh, there is gloom in the air here that you can cut with a knife. Now, what, what's going on in this place, eh? You got the drink you wanted, didn't you? Why that glum look on your mug? You won't be singing a song yourself, Sue. You shut up. Huh. I thought lunch was ready. I'm hungry as a hunter. Uh, where's your mother? Huh? Here I am. I had to calm down Bridget. She's in a tantrum over you being late again, and I don't blame her. You have to tell you if your lunch is dried out from waiting in the oven, it serves you right. You can like it or leave it, for all she cares. Oh, I am so sick and tired of pretending this is a home. You won't help me. You won't put yourself out the least bit. You don't know how to act in a home. You should have remained a bachelor and lived in second-rate hotels and, and entertained oh. your friends in bars Mama, and then Mama, nothing whatever have happened. Mama, Mama, why don't we go in to eat? Yes, it's inconsiderate of me to dig up the past where I know your father and Jamie must be hungry. I hope you have an appetite, dear. What was that glass doing there? Did you take a drink? How can you be such a fool? Don't you know it's the worst thing? James, you're to blame. How could you let him? Do you want to kill him? Don't, don't, don't you remember my father? He wouldn't, he wouldn't stop when he was stricken. Oh, no, he said, like you, the doctors are fools and, and whiskey was a good tart. no comparison at all. I, I don't know why I... Forgive me for scolding you, James. One small drink won't hurt. I mean, it might even do him some good if it gives him an appetite. For God's sakes, let's eat. I've been working in the damn dirt under the hedge all morning. Oh, yes. oh, you go right ahead, lads. I will be there in one moment. Why do you look at me like that? I, is my hair coming down? I... I, I was so worn out from last night, I thought I'd better lie down this morning, and I'd, I drowsed off and had a nice, refreshing nap, but I was sure I fixed my hair when I woke up. Oh, of course, I couldn't find my glasses. Please stop staring. No one would think you were accusing me. James, you don't understand. Oh, I do understand, Mary. I understand. I've been a damn fool ever to believe in you. I don't know what you mean by believe in me. All I felt was spying and distrust and suspicion. Why are you having another drink? You never have more than one before lunch. <laughs> oh, well, I know what to expect. You'll be drunk tonight. Oh. It won't be the first time, will it? Or the thousand. James, please, you don't understand. I've been so worried about Edmund. Well, I don't want to hear any of those damned excuses, Mary. Excuses? God in heaven. Can't believe that of me, James. You mustn't believe that. Listen, sh shall we not go in lunch, dear? I don't want anything, but I'm sure you must be hungry. James, I tried so hard. I tried so oh, hard. I'm sure you did, Mary. Why, in the name of God, couldn't you have the strength to keep on? 
I don't know what you're talking about. How's it strange to keep on what? Never mind. No use now. <laughs> oh, God. No use finding fault with Bridget. She doesn't listen. I can't threaten her. She threatens she'd leave. And she does do her best at times. It's too bad those are always the times you're sure to be late, Jane. Oh, well, there's this consolation. It's hard to tell from her cooking whether she's doing her best or her worst. Never mind. The summer will be over soon, thank goodness. Your season will open again. We can go back to trains and second-rate hotels. I hate them, too, but at least I don't expect it to feel like a home when there's no housekeeping to worry about. It's unreasonable to expect Bridget and Kathleen to act as if this is a home. They know it isn't as well as we know it. Never has been, never will be. Oh, it was once, Mary, before you... Before I what? No, dear. No, whatever you mean, it isn't true. It was never a home. You've always preferred a ballroom, and for me, it's always been as lonely as a dirty room in a one-night stand hotel. See, in a real home, one is never lonely. You forget I know from experience what a real home is like. I gave one up to marry you. My father's home. Hmm. Edmund, I'm worried about you. You hardly touch a thing at lunch. That's no way to take care of yourself. It's all right for me not to have an appetite. I'm getting too fat, but you must eat, dear. Promise me. Yes, Mama. McGuire said he might call me. McGuire? He must have a new piece of property that nobody would think of buying except your father. Hello. Oh, it's always seemed to me he could afford to keep on buying property, but never to give me a home. Hello. Hello? What? I can't... Oh, oh, uh, yeah, how are you, doctor? Eh? I see. I see. Oh, that didn't sound like glad tidings. Well, uh, you explain all of that to him when you see him this afternoon, will you, eh? What? I, oh, yes, he'll be there at 4 o'clock. Yes. I will try to be there before then. I, I have to be uptown. On... I will try to be there before then. I have to be uptown on business anyway. Oh, goodbye, doctor. Uh, uh, Dr. Hardy uh, wants to be sure and see you this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Well, what did he say? I wouldn't believe him if he sworn a stack of Bibles. Not that I give a damn round. You mustn't anyway. pay attention to a word he Mary. says, Mary! And, oh, we all know why you like him, James, because he's cheap. Please don't try to tell me I know all about Dr. Hardy. Heaven knows I ought to after all these years. He's an ignorant fool. There ought to be a, a law against men like him practicing. He has no slightest idea. When you're in agony and half insane, he sits and holds your hand and delivers sermons on willpower. Oh, Mary. He deliberately humiliates you. He makes you beg and plead. He treats you like a criminal. And yet it was exactly the same type of cheap quack who first gave you the medicine, and you didn't know what it was until it was too late. I hate doctors. They'll do anything. They'll sell their souls. What's worse, they'll well, for sell God's sake, you. You don't know what you're buying yourself in hell. Mary, darling. Forgive me, dear. You're right. It's useless to be angry now. <laughs> 
I have to go upstairs for a few minutes, if you'll oh, excuse God, me. Mary, I have to fix please. my hair. Please, that is if Mary, I can find my Mary, glasses. Mary, what Mary, is it, dear? Oh, nothing, Mary, nothing. You're welcome to come with me if you're so suspicious. Oh, God, what good would that do? You'd only postpone it. I am not your jailer. This is not a prison. No, I know you can't help thinking it's a home. I'm sorry, dear. I don't mean to be bitter. It's not your fault. Another shot in the arm. You cut out that kind of talk. Hold that foul tongue! Oh, that rotten Broadway loafer's lingo. Have you no decency? No pity? You ought to be thrown out in the gutter. Oh, but if I did, of course, we'd know who would weep for you, eh? Oh, plead your cause and excuse you and complain until I took you back. God, don't I know that? No pity. I have all the pity in the world for her. I understand what a hard game to beat she's up against, which is more than you ever have. My lingo didn't mean I had no feeling. I was merely putting bluntly what we all know now and have to live with again. The cures are no damn good except for a while. The truth is there is no cure, and we've been saps to hope. They Shut never up. come back. They never come back. Everything's in the oh. bag. It's all a frame-up. We're all fall guys and suckers, and we can't beat... Oh, God, if I felt the way you I do... I thought it... you did. Your poetry isn't very Shut cheery, up. nor the stuff you read and claim you admire. Your pet with the unpronounceable name, for you? example. You don't know what you're talking about. Enough to know Have you read Whoever read anything, 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 There is very little choice between that philosophy you picked up from your Broadway loafers and that that Edmund got out of those damn books. Yes, they're both rotten to the core. The you have flouted the religion you oh, were born and brought that up in. You listen to me. The one true faith, the Catholic Church. And that denial has brought you nothing but self-destruction. Yeah, well, we don't pretend at any rate. I don't notice you've worn any holes in the knees of your pants going to mass. I may be a bad Catholic in the observance. Oh, may God forgive me, but I believe and you lie. I may not go to church regularly, but every night, every morning, I am on my knees and I pray. Well, did you pray for Mama? I have prayed to the Lord God Almighty for her these many years. Oh. Well, then Nietzsche must be right. God is dead. Yeah. If it's pity for man, I've if got If only your died. mother had prayed. She may not have denied her faith, I tell you, she, she's forgotten it. She has no strength of spirit left to fight that damn curse. Oh, what is the sense of talking with... <laughs> We've lived with it before, eh? We'll live with it again. But, oh, I wish she had not led me to hope this time. I swear to God, I never will again. It's a rotten thing to say, Papa. All right, all right. Well, I'll hope. Oh, he'll hope. <laughs> She's only just started. He can't have got a hold of her. She can still stop. I'm going to talk to her. You can't talk to her Gosh, now. you can't talk to her now. She'll listen, but she won't listen. She'll be here, but she won't be here. You know the way she gets. Oh, God, yes. That's the way that poison works each time. Like every morning from now on, there'll be that slow drifting away. And then by nighttime, she's... No, oh, you cut it out, Papa. I'm gonna get dressed. I'll make so much noise, she can't suspect I've come to spy on her. <laughs> what did Doc Hardy say about the kid? Oh, it's what you suspected. It's consumption. Damn it. There's no doubt about it. He'll have to go to a sanatorium. Oh, yes, yes. The sooner the better for him and everyone around him. The doctor said that if he obeys instructions, he might be cured in six months, a year at the most. I cannot believe a son of mine would be... It did not come from my side of the family. Every one of us had lungs like an ox. Who gives a damn about that part of it? Jesus. Where does Hardy want to send him? Uh, oh, that's what I have to well, see. Well, pick out a good place and not pick. some cheap I will dump. send him. Well, Loretta don't Hardy give Hardy or over the hills of the poor house song about well, taxes I, you and stop that. mortgages. I am not some millionaire who just throws his money out the window. So why shouldn't I tell Hardy the truth? Because eh? he'll think you wanted to pick a cheap dump. No. And because he'll know it isn't the truth. Especially when he hears afterward you see McGuire and let that flannel mouth gold brick merchant sting you with another piece of bum property. Keep your nose out of my business. This is Edmund's business. You. What I'm afraid of is with your Irish bug treasure idea, consumption is fatal. You'll figure it to be a waste of money to spend any more than that you can help. That is one lie. Then prove it's a lie. I That's what I want. I That's why I brought it up. My son will get better as soon as possible. In the meantime, you keep that rotten, filthy tongue off Ireland. 
You're a fine one to talk. A map of it all over your face, huh? <laughs> Not after I wash my face. That's all I've got to say. It's up to you. Now, what do you want me to do this afternoon now that you're going uptown? I've done all I can do on the hedge until you cut more of it. You don't want me to go ahead with your clipping, I know that. No, you'd only get it crooked like you do everything else. Then I'd better go uptown with Edmund. The bad news coming on top of what's happened to Mama oh, may hit him hard. That good idea, lad. You go uptown with the boy. Try to keep his spirits up, eh? If you can. If you can without getting drunk, that is. Now, what would I use for money? The last I heard, they were still selling booze, not giving it away. I'll get dressed. You haven't seen my glasses, have you, Jamie? Oh, God. You haven't seen them, have you, James? No. Mary. Well, what's the matter with Jamie? <laughs> have you been nagging at him again? You really shouldn't treat him with such contempt all the time. If he'd been brought up in a real home, I'm sure he would have been different. Uh -huh. Oh, you're not much of a weather prophet, dear. See how hazy it's getting? I can hardly see the other shore. Yeah, well, I was a bit hasty, I'm afraid. It looks like we're in for another spell of fog. Oh, well, I won't mind it tonight. I don't imagine you will, Mary. I don't see Jamie going down to the hedge. Where'd he go? Oh, for God's sake. He's going uptown with Edmund. You just passed him on the stairs. He's going up to change his clothes. Yeah, I'd better do the same. I'll be late for my appointment. No, no, don't go, dear. I don't want to be alone. Oh. I, I mean, you've got plenty of time. You know you both you can get dressed in a tenth the time it takes the boys. And there's something I wanted to say. Yeah. What was it? Oh, I've forgotten. Yeah. I'm glad Jamie's going uptown this afternoon. You didn't give him any money, I No, I did no, not. No, he'd only spend it on drinking. You know what a vile, poisonous tongue he has when he's drunk? Not that I would mind anything he had to say tonight. But he always manages to drive you into a rage, especially if you're drunk, too, as you will be. I never get drunk. Oh, I'm sure you'll have I have it. never you missed a performance have. in it's hard my for life. It's to tell, truth. but after if 35 get, uh, Mary, years on now... if marriage, I did get drunk, you know, oh, it is not me whom you should blame. No man ever had a better reason. Reason? What reason? You always drink too much when you go to the club, don't oh. you? Especially if you meet McGuire. He sees to that. Don't think I'm finding fault here. You must do as you please. I won't mind. I'm sure you won't, Mary. I have to change. No, please yeah. wait at least until one of the boys comes down. You'll all be leaving me so soon. Oh, my God. It's you who are leaving us, Mary. I? That's a silly thing to say, James. How could I leave? There's no place I could go. Who would I go to see? I have no friends. Well, that's your own fault. You... Surely there is one thing. Oh, one thing you might do this afternoon, Mary, would be good for you. Take a ride in the automobile. God, get out of this house, eh? And get some sun, fresh air. You know I hate those damn things. I'd rather walk or take a trolley. But I had it waiting for you when you came back from the sanatorium because, oh, I hoped it would bring you pleasure. Peace of mind. God, you used to ride in that damn thing every day, and you've hardly used it at all lately. That cost me a lot of money I cannot afford. And that damn chauffeur that... I have to board. I have to lodge. I have to pay him high wages, whether or not he drives you. That is waste. Yes, it was a waste the of money, James. You shouldn't have bought a second-hand automobile. In a you were swindled age. as you always are because you insist on second-hand bars. Second and everybody will tell you that's waste better than any new car. It was only a helper in a garage. It's never been a real chauffeur. Oh, I know he may not be a millionaire's flunky, flunky, but he but is he honest. more than makes up for that for the graft he gets from the garage and what repair bill. Like You're just like Jamie. You see, the worst in everybody. Well, you mustn't be offended, dear. I wasn't offended when you gave me the automobile. I knew you didn't mean to humiliate me. I knew that was the way you had to do everything, and I was grateful and touched. I knew buying the automobile was a hard thing for you to do, and it proved how much you loved me in your way. Especially since you couldn't possibly believe it would do me any good. Oh, for the love of God. Mary, for my sake, for the boys, for your own sake, won't you stop now? James, stop what? What are you talking about? Oh, James, we've loved each other. We always will. Let's only remember that and not try to understand the things we can't understand or help things we can't, can't help. I mean, the things that life has done to us that we can't explain. Listen to me, Mary. Explain. You won't even try. Try to go for a drive this afternoon, you mean? Certainly, if you wish me to, although it makes me feel lonelier than if I stayed here. No. There's no one I can invite to drive with me, and I never know where to tell Smythe to go. If there was a friend's house, I could drop in and laugh and gossip for a while, but of course there isn't. There never has been. At the convent, I had so many friends. 
girls whose families had lovely homes. I would visit them, and they would visit me in my father's home. But, of course, after I married an actor... Well, you know what actors were considered in those days. A lot of them gave me the cold shoulder. Then, right after we were married, there was that scandal about the woman who'd been your mistress suing you. Oh, God, don't you and drag up what's long either forgotten, either Mary! Me or cut me dead. I hated the ones oh, who Lord, cut me like much less than a pitier. What will it be like tonight? Come to think of it, I do have to take a drive this afternoon. There's something I must get at the drugstore. Oh, oh yes, I have to get leave it to you. You've got stuff in. Soap, prescriptions powder, for more. The cold cream. Oh, I hope you lay in a good supply this time, Mary. And maybe, oh God, maybe we won't have another night like when you ran out the front door half crazed in your nightgown. Oh, try Jack, to throw yourself you off the dock. Not remember, you must not oh, humiliate oh, me. Me, Mary. I'm sorry. I... I am sorry, uh... It doesn't matter. Nothing like that ever happened. You must have dreamed it. I was so healthy before Emma was born. Oh, you remember, James. It wasn't a nerve in my body. Even, yeah. even traveling with you, season after season, week after week, of one-night stands and trains without pullmans, eating bad food, bearing children in hotel rooms, I still kept healthy. Bearing Evan was the last straw. I was so sick afterward. And that cheap quack, all he knew was I was in pain, and it was easy to stop the pain. Mary, Mary, can't you forget the past? Why, how can I? The past is the present, isn't it? It's the future, too. We all try to lie out of that one, but life won't let us. Can't blame on me myself. I swore after Eugene died I'd never have another baby. I was to blame for his death. If I hadn't left him with my mother to join you on the road because you wrote telling me you were lonely and missed me, Jamie would never have been allowed when he still had the measles to go in the baby's room. Oh, I've always believed he did it on purpose. He was jealous of the baby. He hated him. Oh, I know he was only seven, but he was never stupid. He'd been warned it might kill the baby. He knew. I've never been able to forgive him for that. Oh, for God's sake, can't you let our dead baby rest in peace? It was my fault. I should have insisted on staying with Eugene and not let you persuade me to join you just because I loved you. Above all, I should never have let you insist I have another baby to take Eugene's place because you thought that would make me forget his death. I knew from experience by then. Children need homes to be born and if they're to be good children, women should have homes if they're to be good mothers. I was afraid the whole time I carried that, and I knew oh, something God. terrible would happen. I knew I'd prove with the way I left Eugene that I wasn't worthy to have another baby, and God would punish me. Mary, if for I God's sake, if he ever heard you, he'd think you never wanted him. Oh, I did He's want him more than anything in the world. You don't understand. Oh, I meant it for his sake. Yes, Mary. He's never been happy. He never will be. Nor healthy. He was born nervous and too sensitive, and that's my fault. And ever since he's been sick, I keep remembering Eugene and my father. And I am frightened and oh, guilty. Please, Mary, but for God's sake, that's Edmund. Now, come on, now, be yourself, eh? That's the least that you can do. Well, look at you, lad, all spick and span, eh? I'm on the way up to change my... Oh, wait a minute, Pop. I hate to bring up disagreeable topics, but there is the matter of car fare. I'm broke. No. Uh, you will be broke, lad, until Can I learn the value of a dollar. No. No, because you have been learning. Well, trying to. <laughs> You've been working hard. Well, you were, until you took you. I'm proud of you. Now, here, you put that in your... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, well, I'll put it in your pockets. And about a thank you? Huh? <laughs> How sharper than a serpent's tooth it is to have, have a thankless, thankless child. I know, oh, Papa, give me a minute. I'm knocked speechless. This isn't a dollar, it's a ten Yeah, spot. I know. Well, you'll we'll probably bump into some of your friends uptown, lad. You can't hold your end of the bargain up with nothing in your jeans. I should mean it. Well, thank you, Pop. But why all of us? Did Doc Hardy tell you I was gonna die? Because what? That's a rotten crack. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm very grateful. Thank I you won't all. have it, Edmund. Do you hear me such morbid nonsense saying you're going to die? It, it's all those books you read, nothing but sadness and death. Your father shouldn't allow you to have them. And the things you write yourself are even worse. Yeah. You think you didn't want to live. A boy well, your age with everything in front of him. It's just a pose you get from books. You're not really sick at all. Mary, would you please hold your tongue, darling? I need to ask your mother what you were going to a little earlier last night. James, right it's absurd. Now. Oh, look at the so time. I have to shake a leg. nothing at all. 
Everybody has colds and gets over them. Oh, how do you feel, dear? Oh, your head's a little hot, but that's just from going out in the sun. You look ever so much better than you did this Listen, morning. Mama. You know, I think it'd be a much better idea for you to stay here this afternoon let me take care of you. Oh, it's such a tiring trip uptown, that dirty old trolley on a hot day like this. I think you'd be much better off here with me. You forget I have an appointment with Dr. Hardy, oh, Mama. Oh, telephone him. Tell him you don't feel well enough. It's just a waste of time and money to see him. He'll only tell you some lie. He'll pretend Listen, he Mama, sounds I want to ask you something. Bread you only just butter. started, Mama. You, you can still idiot. stop. You've got the willpower. We'll all help you. I'll, I'll Please do anything. Please don't talk about things you don't understand. All right, I give up. God, I knew it was no use. Anyway, I don't know what you're referring to, but I do know you should be the last one. Right after I returned from the sanatorium, you began to be ill. I've been warned that I must have peace at home with nothing to upset me, and all I've done is worry about you. That's not an excuse. I'm only trying to explain. It's not an excuse. Promise me, dear, you won't believe I made you an excuse. What else can I believe? Yes, I suppose you can't help suspecting that. What do you expect? Nothing. I don't blame you. How can you believe me when I can't believe myself? I've become such a liar. I never lied about anything once upon a time. Now I have to lie, especially to myself. But how could you understand when I don't myself? I've never understood anything about it, except that one day, long ago, I found I could no longer call my soul my own. But someday, dear, I'll find it again. Someday, when you're all well and I see you healthy and happy and successful, I don't have to feel guilty anymore. Someday, when the Blessed Virgin forgives me and gives me back my faith, in her love and pity that I had in my convent days, and I can pray again. Someday, when she sees that nobody in the world can believe in me even for a moment anymore, then she'll believe in me. And with her help, it'll be so easy. Well, I'll hear myself scream with agony, but at the same time, I will laugh, because I will be so sure of myself. Mama. Of course, you can't believe that either. Well, now that I think of it, you might as well go uptown this afternoon. I forgot I'm taking a drive. I have to go to the drugstore. You'd hardly want to go there with oh, me. Mama, so please ashamed. don't. I suppose you'll divide that $10 your father gave you, Jamie. You always divide everything, don't you? Like good sports. I know what he'll do with his share. Get drunk someplace where he can be with the only kind of woman he understands or likes. Promise me you won't drink, Edmund. It's so dangerous. You know, Dr. Hardy told I thought you said he was an old idiot. Edmund. Come on, kid, let's beat it. Mama. Go oh, on, Jamie's waiting. If you're coming back for dinner, try not to be late and tell your father you know what bridge Goodbye, it is. Bye, Mary. Goodbye, Mama. Bye. Lonely here. You're lying to yourself again. You wanted to get rid of them. Their contempt and disgust aren't pleasant company. You're glad they've gone. But then, Mother of God, why do I feel so lonely?
foghorn isn't awful, Kathleen. It is indeed, Mom. It's like a banshee. Oh, well, I don't mind it tonight. Last night it drove me crazy. I lay awake worrying till I couldn't stand it anymore. Bad cess to it. I was scared out of my wits riding back from town. I thought that ugly monkey smile would drive us in a ditch or against a tree. You couldn't see your hand in front of you. I'm glad you had me sitting back with you, Mum. If I'd been in front with that monkey, he can't keep his dirty hands to himself. Give him half a chance and he's pinching me on the leg or you know where. Asking your pardon, Mum, but it's true. It wasn't the fog I minded, Kathleen. I really love fog. They say it's good for the complexion. Hides you from the world and the world from you. You feel as if everything's changed and nothing's what it seemed to be and nobody can find you or touch you anymore. I wouldn't care so much if Smythe was a fine, handsome man like some chauffeurs I've seen. I mean, if it was all in fun, for I'm a decent girl, but for a shriveled runt like Smythe, I've told him you must think I'm hard up that I'd notice a monkey like you. I've warned him. One day I'll give a clout that I'll knock him into next week. And so I will. Hmm. The fog horn I hate. It won't let you alone. It keeps reminding you and warning you and calling you back. Oh, well, it can't tonight. It's just an ugly sound that doesn't remind me of anything. Except perhaps Mr. Tyrone snores. <laughs> I've always had such fun teasing about it. He snored ever since I can remember, especially when he's had too much to drink. But he's like a child. He hates to admit it. Oh, well, I suppose I snore sometimes, too, and I don't like to admit it, so I've got no right to make fun of him, have I? Ah, oh, sure. Everybody healthy snores. It's a sign of sanity, they say. What time is it, Mom? I ought to go back in the kitchen. The damp is in Bridget's rheumatism, and she's like a raging devil. She'll bite my head no, off. No, don't go, Kathleen. I don't want to be alone. You won't be for long. The master and the boys oh, will be Oh, I doubt home very too. much that they'll come home for dinner. They have such a good excuse to remain in the bar rooms where they feel at home. Don't worry about Bridget. I'll tell her I kept you here with me. And you can take her a big drink of whiskey when you go. She won't mind then. No, Mom. That's the one thing can make her cheerful. She loves her drop. Have another drink yourself, Kathleen, if you wish. Oh, I don't know if I'd better, Mum. I can feel what I've had already. Well, maybe one more won't harm. Here's your good health, Mum. Ah. Uh, I really did have good health once, mm. Kathleen. But that was long ago. Oh, the master's sure to notice what's gone from the bottle. He has the eye of a hawk for that. No, we'll play Jamie's trick on him. Just measure out a few drinks of water and pour them in. Oh, <laughs> God, save me. It'll be half water. He'll know by the taste. No, by the time he gets home, he'll be too drunk to notice the difference. He has such a good excuse, he believes, for drowning his sorrows. Well, it's a good man's failing. I wouldn't give a tronine for a teetotaler. They've no high spirits. Good excuse, Mum. You mean Master Edmund? I can tell the Master's worried about him. Don't be silly, Kathleen. Why should he be? A touch of the grip is nothing. And Mr. Tyrone's never worried about anything except money and property and the fear he'll end his days in poverty. I mean, deeply worried. We really cannot understand anything else. He's a very peculiar man, Kathleen. Well, he's a fine, handsome, kind gentleman, just the same, Mum. Never mind his weakness. I don't mind. I've loved him dearly for 36 years. That proves I know he's lovable at heart and can't help being what he is, doesn't it? That's right, Mum. Love him dearly. For any fool can see he worships the ground you walk on. Speaking of acting, Mum, how is it you never went on the stage? I? What put that absurd notion in your head? I was brought up in a respectable home. Educated in the best convent in the Middle West before I met Mr. Tyrone, I hardly knew there was such a thing as a theater. I was a very pious girl. I even dreamed of becoming a nun. I never had the slightest desire to be an actress. Well, I can't imagine you a holy nun, Mum. Sure, you never darken the door of a church, God forgive you. I've never felt at home in the theater. Even though Mr. Tyrone has made me go on all his tours with him, I've had little to do with the people in his company or anybody on the stage. Not that I have anything against them. They've always been kind to me and I to them, but I've never felt at home with them. Their life is not my life. It's always stood between me. Oh, let's not talk of old things. It couldn't be helped. How thick the fog is. I can't see the road. All the people in the world could go by and I wouldn't know it. 
I wish it was always that way. It's getting dark already. It'll be night soon, thank goodness. It was kind of you to keep me company this afternoon, Kathleen. I would have been lonesome going uptown all by myself. Sure. Wouldn't I rather ride in a fine automobile than stay here and listen to Bridget's lies about her relations? It was like a vacation, Mom. There was only one thing I didn't like. What was that, Kathleen? Oh, the way the man in the drugstore acted when I took in the prescription for you. The impudence of him. What drugstore? What prescription? Oh, I forgot the medicine for the rheumatism in my hands. Well, what did the man say? Not that it matters as long as he well, filled the prescription. Well, it mattered to me, then. I'm not used to being treated like a thief. He gave me a long look and says, insultingly, where did you get hold of this? And I says, it's none of your damn business, but if you must know, it's for the lady I work for, Mrs. Tyrone, who's sitting out in the automobile. That shut him up quick. He gave a look out at you and said, oh, and went to get the medicine. Yes, he knows me. Well, I have to take it, for there's no other that stops the pain. All the pain. I mean, in my hands. Poor hands. You never believe it, Kathleen, but they were once one of my good points. Along with my hair and my eyes. I had a fine figure, too. They were a musician's hands. Oh, I used to love the piano. I worked so hard on my music in the convent, if you can call it work when you do something you love. Mother Elizabeth and my music teacher both said I had more talent than any student they could remember. My father paid for special lessons. He spoiled me. He would do anything I asked. He would have sent me to Europe to study after I graduated, and I might have gone if I hadn't fallen in love with Mr. Tyrone. Or I might have become a nun. I had two dreams. To be a nun, that was the more beautiful. And to be a concert pianist. That was the other. I haven't touched a piano for so many years. I couldn't play with these crippled fingers even if I wanted to. But for, for a time after my marriage, I, I tried to keep up my music. Ah, but it was hopeless one night. Stands always leaving children, never having a home. Oh, see, Kathleen, how ugly they are. So crippled and maimed, you'd think they've been through a horrible accident. Come to think of it, so they have. I won't look at them. They're worse than the foghorn for reminding. Even they can't touch me tonight. They're far away. I see them, but the pain is gone. You've taken some of the medicine. It made Jack funny, Mum. If I didn't know better, I'd think you'd a drop taken. It kills the pain. You go back until at last you're beyond its reach and only the past when you were happy is real. If you think Mr. Tyrone is handsome now, Kathleen, you should have seen him when I first met him. He, he had the reputation of being one of the best-looking men in the country. All the girls in the convent who'd seen him act or seen this picture used to rave about him. He was a great matinee idol, you know. W women used to stand outside the stage door just to see him come out. <laughs> oh, you can imagine how excited I was when my father wrote me that he and James Tyrone had become friends. And I was to meet him when I came home for Easter vacation. I showed the letter to all the girls. <laughs> how envious they were. My father took me to see him act first. There was a play about the French Revolution, but the, the leading part was a nobleman. Oh, I couldn't keep my eyes off him. I wept when they threw him in prison, and then I was so mad because I was sure my eyes and my nose would be red. My father had said that we would go backstage right after the play to his dressing room, and so we did. <laughs> I was so bashful, all I could do was stammer and blush like a little fool. But I guess he didn't think I was a little fool. I know he liked me from the moment we were introduced. I guess my eyes and my nose couldn't have been red after all. I was really very pretty then, Kathleen. And he, he was handsome beyond my wildest dreams in, in his makeup and his nobleman's costume that was so becoming to him. 
Well, he was different from all ordinary men, like he came from another world. But at the same time, he was simple and kind and unassuming and not a bit vain or stuck up. I fell in love right then. So did he, he told me afterward, and I, I forgot all about becoming a nun or a concert pianist. All I wanted was to be his wife. Thirty-six years ago, and I can see it as clearly as if it were tonight. And we have loved each other ever since. And in all those thirty-six years, Kathleen, there's never been a breath of scandal about him. I mean, with another woman, not since he met me. That has made me very happy, Kathleen. It's made me forgive so many other things. He's a fine gentleman, and you're a lucky woman. Can I take the drink to Bridget now, Mom? It must be near dinner time, and I ought to be in the kitchen helping her. If she don't get something to quiet her temper, she'll be after me with the cleaver. Yes, go. I don't need you now. Thank you, Mom. You won't be alone long. The master and the boys will oh, be no, home they soon. won't come. Tell Bridget I won't wait. You can serve dinner promptly at half past six. I'm not hungry, but I'll sit at the table. We'll get it over with. Oh, you ought to eat something, Mum. It's a queer medicine if it takes away your appetite. What medicine? I don't know what you're talking about. Take the drink to Bridget. Yes, Mum. Oh, you're a sentimental fool. What's so wonderful about the first meeting between a silly romantic schoolgirl and a matinee idol? Or happier before you knew he existed in the convent when you could pray to the Blessed Virgin. I could only find the faith I lost so I could pray again. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. You expect the Blessed Virgin to be fooled by a lying, dope fiend reciting words. You can't hide from her. Oh, I must go up. I haven't taken enough. When you start again, you never know exactly how much you need. That must be them. Well, now, why have they come back? They don't want to, and I'd much rather be alone. Oh, no, I'm so happy they've come. I've been so horribly lonely. I'm here, dear, in the living room. I've been waiting for you. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy you've come. I've given yeah. up hope. I was afraid you wouldn't come home. Oh, oh it's such a dismal fog. You must be much more cheerful uptown in the barrooms where there are people you can talk and joke with. Yeah. Well, don't deny it, dear. I know how you feel. I, I don't blame you a bit. Yeah. You, come and sit down. Dinner won't be ready for a minute yet. You're actually a little early. Well, wonders never cease. And here's the whiskey, dear. Shall I pour you a drink? Yeah. And you, Edmund, I don't want to encourage you, but one is an appetizer. Can't do any harm. Where's Jamie? You know, uh, 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 uh. Oh, of course, he'll never come home as long as he has the price of a drink left. I'm afraid Jamie's been lost to us for a long time, dear. Yeah. But we mustn't allow him to drag Edmund down with him, as he's like to do. He's jealous because Edmund's always been the baby, just as he used to be with Eugene. He'll never be content until he makes Edmund the hopeless failure he is. Oh, will you please stop talking? I think that the you say right Mark now, Mary, is probably... Jamie as he is now that he was ever my baby. Yeah. You remember, James, what a healthy, happy baby he was? Sure, yeah. And all the one-night stands and the bad food, they never made him cross or sick. He was always laughing and smiling. He hardly ever cried. Eugene was the same, healthy and happy during the two years he lived before I let him die through my oh, neglect. Oh, my God, I'm a fool to come home. Papa, will you shut up? It was Edmund who was a cross patch when he was little, always getting upset and frightened about nothing at all. Everybody said, dear, you cried at the drop of a hat. Maybe I guess it was a good reason not to laugh. Ah, lad, you know better Whoever than to pay any attention. Whoever would believe Jamie would grow up to disgrace us. Well, you remember, James, the years after he went to boarding school, we received such glowing reports. Oh, yeah. Everybody liked him. His teachers all told us what a, what a fine brain he had and how easily he learned his lessons. 
Even after he began to drink and they had to expel him, they wrote us telling us how sorry they were because he was so likable and such a brilliant student. They all predicted a wonderful future for him if he could ever learn to take life seriously. Uh -huh. Poor Jamie. It's a pity. It's hard to understand. No, it isn't. You brought him up to be a boozer. Ever since he's, he I first opened his eyes, he's watching you drinking head all the time. Shut up. That's not the entertaining attention. Whenever he woke up with a nightmare or a stomachache, it was really your remedy was to give him a teaspoon of whiskey to quiet him. Anyway, it's true. You did the same thing with me. I can remember that teaspoonful of booze every time I woke up with a nightmare. Oh, you were continually having nightmares when you were little. You were born afraid because I was so afraid to bring you into the world. But please, don't think I blame your father, Edmund. <coughs> well, he didn't know any better. He never went to school after he was ten. And his people were the most ignorant kind of poverty-stricken Irish. I'm sure they really believed was he was the you best medicine. We're going to have that drink, drink right in his stick. We're going to drink hard enough for fool to listen. Sorry if I sounded bitter or not so also far away, but I did feel a little hurt when you wished you hadn't come home. I was so happy and relieved when you came. Very dreary and sad to be alone here in the fog with night falling. Mary, I want to be here when you're your real self. I was so lonesome, I kept Kathleen with me just to have somebody to talk no. to. Do you know what I was telling you, dear? No, About Mary. the night my father took me back to your dressing room and I first fell in love with you. Do you remember? Oh, my God, do you think I would ever forget, Mary? Huh? No. Do you? No, I know you still love me in spite of everything. God is my judge forever and always, Mary. And I still love you in spite of everything, but I must confess, James, though I couldn't help loving you, I would never have married you if I knew you dragged so much. I remember the first time your barroom friends had to help get to the hotel room and then knocked on the door and ran away before I came to the door. We were still on our honeymoon, do you remember? Uh, no, I do not remember, and it wasn't our honeymoon. I had waited hour I after hour. I have never had to be hugged up to a door room. in my house. Yeah, I kept making excuses for you. I told myself it must be some business connected with the theater. I knew so little about the theater. And I became terrified. I imagined all sorts of horrible accidents. I got down on my knees and prayed that nothing had happened to you, and then they brought you up and left you outside the door. God, no wonder. <laughs> I didn't know how often I was, was to happen in the years to come, how, how many times I was to wait in ugly hotel rooms. I became quite used to when it. When is dinner, Mom? It must be time. Oh, Lord, it must be. Mary, can't you forget? No. But I forgive. I always forgive you, dear, so don't look so guilty. I, I don't want to be sad. I don't want to make you sad. I want to remember only the parts of the past that were happy. Do you remember our wedding, dear? Oh, oh, I'm sure you completely forgot what my wedding gown looked like. Men don't notice such things. They don't think they're important, but... Oh, it was important to me. I can tell you how I felt and worried. I was so excited. My father said, buy anything you want. Never mind the cost. The best is none too good. He spoiled me dreadfully. My mother didn't. She was very pious and strict. I think she was a little jealous. She didn't approve of my marrying, especially an actor. I think she hoped I'd be a nun. She used to scold my father. She'd say, you never tell me, never mind the cost. When I buy anything, you spoil that girl, so I pity her poor husband if she ever marries. She'll expect him to give her the moon. She'll never make a good wife. She was mistaken, wasn't she, James? What? I haven't been such a bad wife, have I? I'm not complaining, Mary. At least I've loved you dearly and done the best I could under the circumstances. That wedding gown was nearly the death of me, and the, and the dressmaker, too. I was so particular, it was never quite good enough. Finally, she said she refused to touch it for fear she'd spoil it. And I made her leave the room so I could examine myself in the mirror. I was so vain and pleased, I told myself, even if your nose and your mouth and your ears are a trifle large, your eyes and your hair and your figure and, and your hands make up for it. You're as pretty as any actress he ever met, and you don't have to use paint. You don't have to use paint. You don't have to use paint. Where's my wedding gown now, I wonder? I kept it wrapped in tissue paper in my drawer. Well, I used to hope I'd have a daughter, and when it came time for her to marry, she couldn't have bought a lovelier gown. I knew, James, you'd never say, never mind the cost. You'd expect her to pick it up at a bargain someplace. 
It was made of soft, <coughs> shimmery satin. And it was trimmed with wonderful old Duchess lace around the neck and the sleeves and, and lace worked in with the folds that were draped around in a bustle effect in the back. <coughs> the basque was boned and very tight. I remember I held my breath when it was fitted so my, my waist would be as small as possible. My father even let me have lace on my white satin slippers. And lace with the orange blossoms in my veil. Oh, how I loved that gown. It was so beautiful. Where is it now, I wonder? I used to take it out from time to time when I was lonely, but it always made me cry, so finally a long time ago, I wonder where I hid it. Maybe in a trunk in the attic. Someday I'll have to look. Dinner's ready, but you're always scolding me, Mary, because I'm late and dinner's ready. Well, for once I'm here and dinner's. I can't eat, I'll drink. <coughs> Forgot I had this stuff. <coughs> Who's been tampering with my whiskey? Now, damn it, the stuff is half water. Well, Jamie... No, oh, he's been away. Even he wouldn't know but do a trick like... A fool could tell, Edmund. You... Oh, my God. Mary, now you answer me, damn it. If you've taken the drink well, on top you of everything... Up. Out, what? You treated Kathleen and Bridget, isn't that it, Mama? Yes. Of course, that they work hard for poor wages, and I'm the housekeeper. Mm -hmm. I have to keep them from leaving. Besides, I wanted to treat Kathleen because I had her go uptown this afternoon with me and sent her in to get my prescription filled. For God's sake, Mama, you can't trust her. You, you want everyone on earth to know? Know what? But I suffer from rheumatism in my hands and need medicine to stop the pain. Why should I be ashamed of that? I never knew what rheumatism was until you were born. Ask your father. Don't pay any attention to her, lad. Once she's off with that wild excuse about those hands, she is far away from us. I'm eh? glad you realize that, Daisy. Perhaps you'll give up trying to remind me, you and Edmund. Oh, why don't you turn on the light, Daisy? It's getting dark. I know you hate you, but Edmund has proved to you that one bowl burning doesn't cost much. You mustn't let your spare the poor out there. I have never Daisy. said that one bulb cost much. It's having them on one here, one there, that makes the electric company rich. I'm a damn fool to try to speak reason to you. You're... I'm getting a fresh bottle, lad. You'll have a real... He'll sneak around to the outside cellar door so the servants won't see him. He's really ashamed of keeping his whiskey padlocked in the cellar. My father's a very strange man, I and mean, it took me many years before I understood him. But you must try and understand, too, and forgive and not feel content because he's close-fisted. His father deserted his mother and their six children a year after they came to America. He told him he had a premonition he was going to die soon, and he was homesick for Ireland and wanted to go back there to die. And so he went, and he did die. Must have been a peculiar man, too. But your father had to go to work in a machine shop when he was oh, only 10 years old. I've heard Papa tell that machine shop story 10,000 oh, times. Oh, I know you've had to listen. I don't think you've ever well, tried you must, to understand. You're not so far gone yet. You've forgotten everything. You haven't asked me what I found out this afternoon. Don't you care a damn? Oh, please, dear, well, you What I've got is me. serious, Mama. Doc Hardy... That lying quack! I... Don't talk to me about Dr. Hardy. If you could hear what the doctor at the sanatorium said about him, the way he treated me, he said he ought to be locked up. There was a wonder I hadn't gone mad. I told him I had one night. The night I ran down to the doctor in my nightdress. You remember that? Oh, I remember, all right. Pay attention to Dr. Hardy. It was right after that, Papa and Jamie decided they couldn't hire it from me. I didn't want to hire it. Jamie told me. I called him a liar. Oh, please, dear, you hurt me. That lying quack! I... Don't talk to me about Dr. Hardy. If you could hear what the doctor at the sanatorium said about him, the way he treated me, he said he ought to be locked up. There was a wonder I hadn't gone mad. I told him I had one night. The night I ran down to the doctor in my nightdress. You remember that? Oh, I remember, all right. Pay attention God, it made everything in life seem rotten. My baby. You hurt me so dreadful. Oh, I'm sorry, Mom. It was you who brought it up. Listen, I'm going to tell you whether you want to hear it or not. I've got to go to a sanatorium. Go away. No. I won't have it. How dare Dr. Hardy advise such a thing without consulting me? 
How dare your father allow it? What right is he? You're my baby. Let him tend to Jamie. Oh, I know why he wants to send you to a sanatorium to take you from me. He's always tried to do that with every one of my babies. He's been jealous of every one of them. He always found ways to make me leave. That was the Wilma, reason Wilma, he... will you stop yeah. talking crazy? Will you stop trying to blame him? Why are you so against my going away now? I've been away a lot. I've never noticed it broke your heart. I'm afraid you're not very sensitive after all. You might have guessed, dear, that once I knew you knew about me, I had to be glad whenever you were where you couldn't see me. Don't. All this talk about loving me, you won't even listen when I, I try to tell you. I don't care to hear because I, check, I, I really... know it's all only right, Hardy's right. ignorant eyes. <laughs> you are so like your father, dear. You like making a big scene about nothing at all so you can get dramatic and tragic. If I gave you the slightest encouragement, you'd tell me next you were going to die. Well, people do die of it. Your own father died. Why do you mention him? There's no comparison at all with you. He had consumption. <laughs> oh, I hate you when you're gloomy. I forbid you to remind me of my father's death. Do you hear me? I hear you. She got it. God, it's pretty hard to take a time having a dope vein for a mother. Uh. Oh. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. Well, I, was just, I, was just, I was just angry. You hurt me. I'm, I'm sorry. Take him to the fog court. Why is it? Fog makes everything sound so sad and lost, I wonder. I can't stay here. I don't want any dinner. I must go up. I haven't taken enough. I hope sometime without meaning it, I will take an overdose. I could never do it deliberately. The Blessed Virgin would never forgive me then. is all scratched, a uh, drunken loafer. He tried to pick it with a wire, eh? Like he's done in the past. I fooled him this time. I've got a special padlock on that thing a professional burglar couldn't pick. Where's Edmund? He went out. What? He has some money left, I suppose. It's burning a hole in his pocket. Maybe he went mm -hmm. uptown to find Jamie again. Yeah, well, yeah. He said he didn't want any dinner. He just doesn't have any appetite. Yeah. Just a summer cold? Yeah. Hey, I'm so frightened. Huh? I know he's going to die. Don't say that, babe. I, the doctor assured me he could be cured in well, six months. You don't months believe that. I know when you're God. acting. Hush. I should never have bored him. I could never have hurt him. Then he would never have had to know his mother was a dope fiend and hater. Mary, don't say that. My God, he loves you. He, he knows it was a curse put on you without your knowing or willing it. He's proud that you're his mother. <laughs> Here, are you? Well, 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 well. Won't Bridget be in a rage? I told her the madam said you wouldn't be home. Don't be looking at me that way. If I've a drop taken, I didn't steal it. I was invited. Let's go into dinner, dear. I'm hungry as a hunter. I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me, James. I couldn't possibly eat anything. My hands pain me dreadfully. Oh. I think it's best I go upstairs. Oh, God, yes, up. Up for more of that damn poison. Mary, my God, you'll be like a mad ghost before the night is half over. I don't know what you're talking about. You say such mean, bitter things when you've had too much to drink. You're as bad as Edmund or Jamie. Mary. Come here!
is that? What? Is that you, Edmund? Yeah. Oh, 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 good, good, good. I'm glad you're back, lad. Put out that light before you come in. <laughs> you are one fine one. I was getting damn lonely. You, you run away, you leave me sitting here all alone in the middle of the night when you know that she... I said, put out that light. We're not having a ball here. Like, there's no need to have the house ablaze with electricity at this hour of the night. Because it's burning up money. Ablaze with electricity? It's one ball. Oh. Hell, everyone keeps the light on in the front hall. Do they go to bed? I, I damn near busted my knee in the door. The light from here shows by the door. <coughs> and you could see your way well enough if you were sober. If I was uh, sober, I'd like that. I don't give one damn about other people, you know. It's they want to be ball. wasteful fools. For God's sake, don't be such a cheapskate. I've, I've proved by figures. If you let the light fall on all night, figures, it wouldn't be as much as one... The proof is in the yeah, bills, yeah, I yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. Where's Facts me? don't mean a thing, do oh. they? What you want to believe, that's the only truth. Huh? Shakespeare was an Irish Catholic, yeah. for example. So he was? Uh, uh, the proof is in his plays. Oh, he wasn't. There's, the proof. there's no yeah. proof in, it, in his plays except for you, the Duke of Wellington. There was another good yeah. Irish Catholic. I never said he was a good one. He was a renegade, but a Catholic just the same. Well, he wasn't. He was. He wasn't. And you just really want to believe no one but an Irish Catholic general could beat Napoleon. I, I am not going to argue <laughs> with you. I said put out the light by the door. I heard you. As far as I'm concerned, it stays on. Damned insolence. Are you going to obey me or not? Not. If you want to be a crazy miser, you can put it out yourself. Oh, I put up with too much from you in the past, eh? From some of those mad things you've done, I didn't think you were quite right in the head. And so I've always excused you. Never lifted my hand to you. Well, there is the straw that breaks the camel's back. Now, you will obey me. You put out that light. Big as you are, so help me. I'll give you a thrashing that'll teach you. Forgive me, I forgot you're not well, lad. Oh, but you shouldn't go yes, me and well, losing my temper. I apologize. I had no right being nasty about nothing. I am a bit sus. I guess I'll put out the damn light. Stay where you are. Let no, it burn. no, no, no. Put out the light. Put I out the light. Let it burn. <laughs> no, leave it on. Leave them all on. Why not? What the hell with them? The poor house is at the end of the road, eh? So it might as well. Come You're sooner. Wonderful. As late. Oh, no, yes. That's a grand. No, laugh, laugh. It's a poor old fool, ain't he, old ham? I will tell you something, young man. The poor house will be the final curtain yet. And that is not comedy. comedy. <laughs> Let's not argue that. Eh? You will live to learn the value of a dollar. Yeah, you have brains in your head, lad. You just do your best to deny them. No, you're not like that damn tramp brother of yours. God, I've given up hope that he'll ever... Where is he, by the way? How do I know? Well, I thought you went uptown to meet him. Oh, I walked out to the beach. I haven't seen him since oh, his afternoon. Oh, my God. If you split the money, I well, gave sure you Sure, I did. He's like always staked me when he had anything. It does not take a soothsayer to tell you. He's in the whole house. Well, what of it if he is? Why not? Uh, oh, why not? Yeah. <laughs> Fifth place oh, indeed. If, in the, if he ever yeah, had a loftier dream than whores and whiskey, I never heard of it. Oh, he's, well, never mind. I don't like the subject any better than you do. Don't want you have a drink with me, lad. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, now you're talking. Oh, now you're talking. Yeah, well, I shouldn't invite you. You've had enough already. Well, enough is not as good as a feast. Well, there's too much in your condition. Oh, forget my condition. Here's you know, how. Drink up and take off your... God, you walked all the way to the beach. You must have gotten damp and chilled. Oh, I dropped in at the inn on the way out and back. It's not a night that I'd pick for a long walk. I love the fog. It was what I needed. You should have enough sense not to miss catching more What the hell with sense? What do we want with sense? We're all crazy. Huh? They are not long, the weeping and the laughter, love and desire and hate. I think they have no portion in us after we oh, pass the gate. God. They are not long, the days of wine and roses. Yeah, Out of a misty dream, our path emerges for a while and closes within a dream. <laughs> the fog was where I wanted to be. Uh -huh. Halfway down the path, you can't even see this house. You'd never even know it was here or any of the other places down this avenue. I couldn't see but a few feet ahead of me. It didn't meet a soul. Nothing was what it is. Everything looked and sounded unreal. That's what I wanted. Be alone with myself. In another world where truth is untrue and life can hide from itself. 
Out beyond the harbor, where the road runs along the beach, I even lost the feeling of being on land. The fog and the sea seemed part of each other. It, it was like walking on the bottom of the sea, as if I drowned long ago, as if I was a ghost belonging to the fog, and the fog was the ghost of the sea. It, it felt damn peaceful to be nothing more than a ghost within a ghost. Oh, don't look at me as if I'd gone nutty. I'm talking sense. Who wants to see life as it is if they can help it? It's just it's a three gorgons in one. You look in their face and you turn to stone. Or <laughs> it's bad. You see him and you die. That is inside of you. And you have to go on living as a ghost. <laughs> oh, you have a poet in you, lad. It's a damn morbid one. Well, the devil take your pessimism. I'm, I'm downhearted enough already. I... Oh, why can't you remember Shakespeare? If I get those third raters, that you will find what you're trying to say in him, lad, as you will anything else that's worth saying. <laughs> we are such stuff as dreams are made on. And our little life is rounded with a sleep. <laughs> well, fine, that's beautiful, but I wasn't trying to say that. We are such stuff as manure is made on, so let's you drink up and forget it. That's for yourself. My idea. I shouldn't have given you that drink. <laughs> it's it's in pack a wallop, all right. Yeah. On you too, even if you never missed a performance. Well, as long as being drunk. Uh, it's what we're after, isn't it, Papa? Let's not kid each other, not tonight. We know what we're trying to forget, but let's not talk about well, it. It's no, no use. All we can do is try to be resigned again. Or be so drunk you can forget it. Oh, lad. Be always drunken. Nothing else matters. That is the only question. If you would not feel the horrible burden of time weighing on your shoulders and crushing you to the earth, be drunken continually. Drunken with what? Drunken with wine? Drunken with poetry? Or drunken with virtue, if you will, but be drunken. I wouldn't worry about the virtue part of that if I were you. That is morbid nonsense. <clears throat> what little truth is in it, you'd find nobly said in Shakespeare. <laughs> Although you did recite it. Well, <laughs> who wrote that? Baudelaire. I never heard of him. Where the hell do you get your taste in authors, lad? It is that damned library of yours with them. Uh, Voltaire, Rousseau, Schopenhauer, Nitsky, Nietzsche. Ibsen, atheists. God, they're fools and madmen, and these poets in Dowson. Yeah? Uh, Baudelaire, Swinburne, oh, Oscar Wilde, degenerate. Three good sets of Shakespeare you could oh, read. I say he was a souse too. Could they lie? Uh, I have no doubt he liked his glass. That is a good man's failing, but he could drink without letting it poison his mind with morbidness and filth. Don't you dare compare him to that pack you have in there. The, your dirty Zola. <laughs> and, uh, Dante Gabriel Rossetti. But he was a dope fiend. Perhaps it would be wise to change the subject. Yeah. Anyway, you can't accuse me of not knowing Shakespeare. Didn't I win five dollars from you once when you bet me I couldn't learn a leading part of his in a week as you used to do in stock in the old days? I learned Macbeth. I recited it letter perfect with you giving me the cues. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable recorded time. And oh, all oh, the audience begins to like fools. Oh, oh you I, I remember. All right, I remember. The, I remember your murdering the line. a tale told by an idiot. I remember. I wish that tape had been over. You wouldn't have to prove it. The, oh, my God. She's moving around, and I thought she'd gone to sleep. Oh, forget it. Oh, forget it. Oh, no, no, no. I'll run another drink. Oh, God, drink hearty, lad. Oh, God. When did Mama go to bed? Right. Uh, right after you left. She didn't want any dinner. What made you run away? Nothing. Yeah. Oh. Here's Al. Lord, I hope she doesn't come down. Why? There'd be nothing but a ghost haunting the past by this time, back before I was born. Don't I know? Back before she ever knew me. God, you think the only happy days that that woman had ever known were at her father's house or that convent, praying or playing that piano. 
Yeah, well, I told you before, though, lad. You, but... <laughs> you have to take your mother's reminiscences with a grain of salt. Think of that wonderful home of hers? That was ordinary enough. And her father was not that grand, noble, oldish gentleman that she'd make him out to be. He was a nice enough man. He was pleasant company, a good talker. I liked him. He liked me. Oh, he... <laughs> he was prosperous enough. Wholesale grocery business. How... Able man. Able man. Oh, but he was... <laughs> he had it. He had his weakness. Like, you know, your mother condemns my drinking. She forgets about his. It is true, he did not touch a drop till he was 40. And then he made up for lost time. He, he became a champagne drinker. That is the worst. But that was the grand pose, to drink only champagne. You go, well, that did him in quick enough. You go, well, that and the consumption. Well, you don't seem able to avoid unpleasant topics, do we? Oh, well, I was happy. How about a game, uh, a hand or two of casino? All right. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> you can't lock up anyhow until Jamie gets back on the last trolley, to which I hope he does not. I don't want to go up anyhow until she's asleep. Oh, neither do I. Oh, you know, I, <laughs> I was telling you that you have to take your mother's tales of the past with that grain of salt. The piano playing, eh? The her dreams of being a concert piano player. That was putting her head by the nuns, lad. See, well, she was their pet because she was so devout. They are very innocent women, you know, in the ways of the world. They, they don't know that what not one in a million well, what that shows you deal promise. Well, if we're going to play, Papa? Shows promise is going to be a concert piano. But not that she didn't play well enough for a schoolgirl, you know. That doesn't mean you can take it for granted that she could ever be a concert. And her becoming a nun, that was the worst. <laughs> oh, God, your mother... Oh, God, your mother was the most beautiful girl that you could ever see. And she knew it. Did you know this about your mother, eh? That she was a, a bit of a, a, a rogue, a coquette behind all the blushing and the shyness, but she was not meant to renounce the world. Oh, Lord, she was bursting hey, with take Papa, we're going to play cards. Why don't you pick up your hand? Oh, God, the love of love. Papa? I am. Papa, it's your play. If I to play the hand, maybe she'll go back up. See her. She must have started oh. down and turned back again. Thank God. Oh, it's pretty horrible to see her the way she must be now. Uh -huh. Hardest thing to take is that blank wall she builds around herself. Or... It's, it's, it's more like a bank of fog in which she hides and loses herself deliberately, though. That's the hell of it. What? You know something and it does it deliberately to get beyond our reach, to, to, to forget we're alive, to be rid of us. It's, oh, it's, it's as if, in spite of loving us, Papa, she hated us. Oh, no, no, that's not her. That's that poison. Well, she oh, takes it to get that effect. At least I know I, she did this she time. She has been very frightened by your illness. Oh, and that, despite all the pretending, don't oh, be too oh. hard on her. I never should have got a hold of her. I know damn well she's not yeah. to blame. I know who is. You are. Hmm? Your damn stinginess. If you'd sent her to a decent doctor when she was so sick after I was born, she'd never have known morphine existed. Instead, you put her in the hands of a hotel quack who wouldn't admit his ignorance. And he took the easiest way out, not giving a damn what happened to her afterwards. All because his fee was cheap. It was another one of your bargains, lad. Uh, listen, you must see my side of it, my boy, because I, how was I to know he was that kind of a doctor? He had a very good reputation. Yeah, among the souses in the hotel bars. But that is a lie. I asked the hotel proprietor myself. I said, recommend the very best. Yes, at the same time crying poor house and making a plane you wanted a cheap one. I know you, sister. My, my God, I ought to after this afternoon. Right now, we're huh? talking about Mama. No. No, 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 no. no. What no, about this no. afternoon? All I'm saying is no matter how you try to excuse yourself, you know damn well your stinginess. That's a lie. After you found out she'd been made a morphine addict, why didn't you send her to a cure then at the start while she still had a chance? No. Oh, no, 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 no. That would have meant spending some money. I'll bet you told her all she had to do was use a, use a little willpower. I'll bet that you should still believe in your heart in spite of what doctors who really know something about it have told you. I know you. better yeah. now, lad. What the hell did I know then? <laughs> What did I know of morphine? What, shh, 
All I knew was that your mother was not over that damned illness yet. That is all. God, it was years before I knew that she'd... Why didn't I send her to a cure, you ask? Oh. My God! Haven't I... Haven't I spent thousands upon thousands in those damn cures? Waste. Eh? Uh, what good did it do? She always started again. Well, you've never given her anything that would help her want to stay off it. What? No home. Except this summer dump in a place she hates. And, and you've refused even to spend money to make this place look decent. Well, what? well, you keep buying more property. Oh and playing sucker for every con man with a gold mine or a silver mine or any kind of get rich quick. Done for you. you will come to that, what you're doing for me. Dragging her on the road, season after season, on one night stand with no one she could talk to. Waiting up night after night in dirty hotel rooms for you to come home with a bun on after the barns. Oh, God, Papa, is it any wonder she didn't want to be cured? Jesus, when I think about it, I hate your guts. Stop it! Are you stop making those crazy accusations your mother only makes when that poison is talking. I never dragged your mother on the road against her will. Naturally, I wanted her with me. I loved her. She came. She wanted to be with me. She loved me. That is the truth. No matter what she says when she's not in her right mind, Dick, and she needn't have been lonely, as you would like to put it. She could always have spoken to the members of my company oh. if she had wanted to, damn it. And she, she had her children with her, huh? And I, oh, I insisted, in spite of that damned expense, on a nurse to travel yes, with her. Yes, you one generosity that because you were jealous of her paying too much attention. Well, you wanted crazy. us out of your way. Well, it was another mistake, too. Oh. If she had to take care of me all by herself and she had that to occupy her mind, maybe she'd have been able to stop. Oh, God! Maybe she you had never been born and she would never have... I know that's the way she no, feels. No, 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 no. She does not feel that way, lad. No, she loves you as a mother ever loved a child. It, I only say that because you drive me into such a goddamn rage. Oh, that dragging up the past. Just... <laughs> Saying that you... I didn't Sweet. mean it, Papa. I'm just like Mama. I can't help liking you in spite of everything. I the same of you. Oh, my God, you are no great shakes as a son. Isn't it a case of a poor thing? But my own. Whose play is it? It's yours. You know, you really shouldn't get so upset by the bad news you got this afternoon. Lack of both doctors assured me, who just obey instructions at this place you're going to, you could be cured at oh, six months, year at the oh, most. Papa, don't kid me. You don't believe that. Well, why shouldn't I believe Papa, it? Papa, you think doctors... I'm going to die. That's why you're sending oh, me to a state farm, isn't it? What? A state Oh, I'm all I know is it is called the uh, Hilltown Sanatorium. Both doctors said it was the best place for, for you. All the money, or for nothing, or practically nothing. Don't lie about it, Papa. You know damn well Hilltown Sanatorium is, is, is a state institution. I know nothing of the kind. Don't lie about it. Jamie suspected you cry poor house to heart, and he wormed the truth out. <laughs> you, just, you can't deny it's the truth about no, the state no, 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 it <laughs> is not true the way you look at it. It... <laughs> What if it is run by the state? What's wrong with that? The state has enough money to run a better place than a private sanatorium. <laughs> oh. Now, why shouldn't I take advantage of it, eh? That is my privilege and yours. We are residents. I help support that damn place. I'm a property owner, and I am taxed to death. Yeah, I'm property valued at a quarter of a million dollars. Lies, oh, Papa, it's all mortgage. Papa Hardy and the specialists know what you're worth. I wonder what they thought of you when they heard you moaning poor out. I only said I was land me poor. On charity, and then you went to the club, and you let McGuire stick you with another bum piece of property. Oh, don't lie. Don't, oh, don't lie. Lies, lies, lies. Papa, lies. Papa. Jamie and I met McGuire in the hotel bar after he left you. Right. And Jamie kidded him about hooking you, and he winked and he laughed. Papa, don't lie! Don't lie about it! Don't lie about it! Don't lie about it! Don't lie about it! Don't lie 
Ever since I went to sea and I was on my own and I found out what hard work for little pay was and what it felt like to be broke and to starve and to camp on park benches because I had no place to sleep, I've tried to be fair to you. Because I know what you've been up against as a kid. I've tried to make allowances. Oh, God, you have to make allowances in this damn family. You go nuts. I've tried to make allowances for myself when I think of all the rotten stunts I pulled. I've tried to feel like, Mama, that you can't help being what you are where money is concerned. But God almighty, Papa. This last 10 years is too much. It makes me want to puke. Mm. That because of the rotten way you're treating me. To hell with that. I treated you rottenly in my way more than once, but to think when it's a question of, of your son having, having consumption, you can show yourself up before the whole town is such a stinking old tight wad. Don't you? Oh, I'm not going to mind you. You're drunk. Hardy will talk, and the whole town will know. Haven't, haven't you any pride? No. Haven't you any shame? Haven't, no, I'm not going to mind you. I'm not going to go to any, any damn state farm just to save you a few lousy dollars to buy more, buy more property with you. Stinking, you stinking old miser. That's right. You, I'm not going to find you, you. <laughs> Stop that, Tommy! <coughs> Getting all upset over nothing. Who said you had to go to this hillside place? Hillside. All right, you can go anywhere you want. I do not give one damn what it costs. All I care about is for you to get well. You must believe that. Eh? And don't call me a stinking old miser just because I don't want those damn doctors to think I'm some millionaire they can swindle. Look at you, little peaked lad. Let's get a bracer. Eh? Come on. <laughs> Whose play is it? A stinking old miser. Oh. Well, maybe you're right, lad. Maybe I just can't help it, eh? As long as I can remember, whenever I've had anything, I was willing to throw money over the bar, buy drinks for the house. You have loaned money to sponges, and you are never going to pay it back. Because <laughs> that was in bar rooms when I was full of whiskey, wasn't it? I have never been able to feel that way sober. Not in my own home. I have never believed in my luck, lad. I was always afraid it would change. Oh, God, I might lose everything I've owned. Somehow you feel the more property you have, the safer you are. I know that's not logical. It's just the way I have to feel. If banks fail, you lose your money. But when you think you can keep property under your feet, it's... Oh, oh you say you know what I was up against when, when I was a boy. Well, the hell you do. My God, how could you? You've had everything. Oh, nurses, schools, college, even though you didn't stay there. We had a little stint of hard work, eh, with our back in hands. Oh, a bit of being penniless, lonely in some foreign country. Well, I'd admire you for it. My, my God, that... It was adventure, romance to you. That was play. Oh, yeah, particularly I, the time I tried to commit suicide. You weren't your right mind, And I it. almost Nobody did. Nobody in my family, you were drunk. I was stone cold so That, that drunk. was the trouble. I'd stopped to think for too Don't long. Don't start with that damn morbid atheism with me, boy, because I do not care to listen to it. I'm trying to explain to you, lad. How could you know the value of a dollar? When I was ten years old, uh, my I've father deserted times. my mother. He went back to Ireland to die, which he did soon enough, and well, he deserved it. I hope he's roasting in hell. Man mistook rat poison for flour. Yeah. <laughs> Sugar. Well, it was something. Oh, there was some gossip that it was not by mistake. Lies. Well, that Nobody... is, Papa, it wasn't by mistake. The more morbid. Who put that in your head? Huh? You're a damn tramp brother. The worst he's ever thought of anybody. That's the only truth he's ever known. What the hell with it? My mother. <laughs> my mother was left a stranger in a strange land with four small children. I know, they, no, me, my older sister, two younger ones. I know. See, my two older brothers couldn't help. They, well, they'd move to other parts. God, they were hard put just to stay alive. <laughs> and there was no damn romance in our poverty. Twice, twice we were evicted from a hovel that we called a home, and my mother's few sticks of furniture were just thrown out into the gutter. 
My mother, my two little sisters, crying. I was crying, and I was trying so hard not to, because I was the man of the family. I was ten years old, and no school for me, boy. I worked. Uh, Twelve hours a day I worked in a machine shop, learning how to make files. Oh, that damn dirty barn of a place. <laughs> it's just sweltering in the summer, and then <laughs> rain coming through the roof. No stove in the window. Oh, no, your hands just grew numb with the cold. The only light came through two small, filthy windows, lad. On a gray day, I had to sit this close to the file in order to see. Eh? You talk about work. <laughs> and do you know what I got for you? 50 cents a week. 50 cents a week, that's right. How we didn't have clothes enough to wear, boy. Food enough to eat. <laughs> oh. Where were I? I remember one Thanksgiving. Oh, God, Papa, it was Christmas. I know it was a Christmas. A Yank gave my mother an extra dollar just as a present. On the way home, she spent the entire thing on food. Oh, oh God, <laughs> I can see her now. She was hugging us and kissing us, the tears streaming down that tired old face. And then she said, oh... Oh, glory be to God for once. There'll be enough for each of us. Oh. oh, that fine, sweet, brave woman. Oh, there never was a finer, braver one. Yeah, she must have been. Oh. Her one fear, lad, was that she would grow old. And die in the poor house. Those were the days when I learned to be a miser. Think a dollar was worth just so much then, boy. A lesson learned very hard to unlearn. You have to search for bargains. Now, if I mistook this the hillside place for a bargain, they go, well, you're just going to have to forgive me, lad. Both doctors did say it was a very good place. And I never meant you would go there if you didn't want to. My God, you can go anywhere you want. I don't care what it costs. Any place that I can afford. Anywhere you want. You're within reason. other place. The specialist recommended it. He said it was the equal of any in America. That run by a bunch of millionaire factory owners. That's primarily for the benefit of their workers. You qualify, lad. You are a resident. They have so much money behind it, they don't have to charge much. You know, seven dollars a week, you get ten times that value. I am not trying to persuade you to anything. You know that. I'm just repeating what I've been told. Oh, I know that, Papa. It sounds like a good bargain to me. Oh, I'd like to go there. Well, it doesn't matter a damn now, does it? What about a game? Who's plays it? Fine. Yours. I overdid the lesson, lad. I made a dollar worth too much, huh? The day came when that mistake ruined my career as a fine actor. I have never admitted this to anyone, lad. Oh, what the hell? I, I feel so downhearted. I feel like it's the end of everything anyway. But what the hell is the sense of fake pride or pretense? This damn play that I... I bought for a song, made such a great success, great money. Success in. Ruined me. With that promise of easy fortune. I didn't want to play anything else, and by the time I woke up to the fact I was a slave to that damn thing, it was too late. They'd identified me with that one part. They didn't want to see me in anything else. 
you're right. <laughs> that lost a great talent. Years of easy repetition, never learning any new... Never really working hard. Thirty-five to forty thousand dollars net profit a season. Look, too great a temptation. <laughs> oh God! Before I bought that damn thing, I was considered one of the three or four young actors with the greatest artistic promise in America. Oh, I had worked like hell. I gave up a good machinist job just to play super spots. I loved the theater so. Oh, I was wild with ambition. I got rid of a brog I could cut with a knife. I read every play ever written. I studied Shakespeare like you'd study the Bible. God, I loved Shakespeare. I would have worked in Shakespeare for nothing. Just the joy of being alive in that great poetry. Oh, I acted well in him. God, he inspired me. I could have been a great Shakespearean actor if I'd kept on. And I know it. <laughs> Lad, in 1874, Booth came to Chicago to the theater where I was the leading man, and I played uh, Cassius to his Brutus one night, Brutus to his Cassius the next. Othello, huh? To his Iago, the first night that I played Othello, he said to the stage manager, that young man is playing Othello better than I ever did. That's from Booth. Greatest actor of his day. Of any day. And it was true. <laughs> I was 27 years old. And that was the highlight. God, I had the world right where I wanted it. Yeah, and I continued on for a while after that. Ambition high. But <laughs> a couple of years later, my good bad luck brought me the big money maker. I didn't look at it that way at first. Then. I just thought of it as a fine, romantic league. I knew I could play it better than anybody else. Lord, it was a huge box office hit right from the start. Did that life had me. Eh? Where it wanted me at 35 to 40 thousand dollars net profit. I see, oh, that was a fortune in those days. Even now, it What did I want to buy? I wonder if it was worth. It is a little late in the day for regrets. <laughs> My play? I'm glad you told me this, Papa. Huh? I know you a lot better now. Maybe I shouldn't have told you, lad. You'll probably only resent me all the more. Really not a very good way to teach you the value of a dollar. <laughs> Glare from those extra lights bothers my eyes. You don't mind if we turn them out, do you? We don't really need them. No. Turn them out. No sense making the electric company rich. Put out the light. And then put out the light. Damn, I don't know what the hell I wanted to buy. Oh, God, Edmund, Edmund, Edmund. Solomon? I would gladly face not having one acre of land, not a dollar in a bank. The poor house for my only home. If, oh, if I could just look back on having been the fine actor I might have been. Oh. <laughs> oh, what the hell are you laughing at? <laughs> ah, not at you, Papa. Yeah. 
Just in life, it's so damn crazy. More morbidness. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with life, lad. It is us. Oh, the default, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves that we are underlings. Oh, oh. that Booth gave my Othello. I made the stage manager write his exact words down on a piece of paper, lad. I carried it in my wallet for years. I'd take it out now and then. I'd, I'd look at it until it made me feel bad. Where is it now? In the house, yes, yes. I put it away for safekeeping. Oh, well, maybe it's an old trunk in the attic along with Mama's wedding dress. For each sake, Papa, we're going to play cards. Why don't we just play cards? Oh, I thought she was moving around. Oh, forget it. She moves above and beyond us, a ghost haunting the past. And here we sit pretending to forget, straining our ears, listening for the slightest sound. Hearing the fog drip from the eaves like the uneven tick of a rundown crazy clock. <sighs> like the, the dreary tears of a trollop spattering a puddle of stale beer on a honky tonk tabletop. It's not so bad that last day. Huh? That was original. Not Baudelaire. Oh, you give me credit. Yeah. You told me some high spots in your memories. You want to hear mine? Yeah. We're all connected with the sea. Here's one. I was on the, I was on the square at the square at bar for Buenos Aires. It was a full moon in the trades, and, and the old hooker was driving 14 knots. I, I lay in the bowsprit, facing astern, with, with the water foaming into spume under me, and the mast with every sail white in the moonlight towering high above me. I, <laughs> I became drunk with the beauty and the singing rhythm of it. And, and for a moment, I lost myself. I actually lost my life. I was set free. I, I dissolved in the sea. I became white sails and flying spray. I became beauty and rhythm. I became moonlight and the ship and the high, dim-starred sky. I, I belonged. Without past or future, within peace and unity and then the wild joy, within something greater than my own life, or the life of man to life itself. Oh, to God, if you want to put it that way. And another time on the American line, when I was looking out in the crow's nest in the dawn watch, it was a, it was a calm sea that time. It was only a lazy groundswell. The slow, drowsy roll of the ship. All the passengers asleep. None of the crew in sight. No sound of man. Black smoke pouring from the funnels behind and beneath me. I was dreaming, not keeping lookout. I'm feeling alone and above and apart. I'm watching the dawn creep like a painted dream over the sky and the sea which slept together. It was then the moment of ecstatic freedom came. The peace, the end of the quest. The the last harbor, the joy of belonging to a fulfillment beyond men's lousy, pitiful, greedy fears and hopes and dreams. And, 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 and several other times in my life when I was swimming far out or lying alone on the beach, I've had the same experience. I've become the sun. I've become the hot sand. I've, be, I've become the green seaweed anchored to a rock swaying in the tide. It was, it was like a saint's vision of beatitude. Oh, I... It was like the veil of things as they seem, drawn back by an unseen hand. For a second you see, and seeing the secret are the secret. For a second there is meaning. And then the hand lets the veil fall, and you're alone again. And you're lost in the fog, and you stumble on towards nowhere for no good reason. Well, it was a great mistake, my being born a man. I would have been much more successful as a seagull or a fish as it is. I'll always be a stranger who never feels at home, who does not really want, who's, who's 
not really wanted, who can never belong, who must always be a little in love with death. Oh, lad, you have the makings of a poet in you, the but that's of a poet. Is not no, 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 I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I'm like the guy who's, a, who's always panhandling for a smoke. He hasn't even got the makings. He's only got the habit. I couldn't touch what I tried to tell you just now. I only stammered. Is that the best I'll ever do? I mean, if I live. It'll be faithful realism, at least. Stammering is the native eloquence of us fog people. <laughs> oh, that sounds, sounds like the absent brother. He must have a peach of a bun on. God, I like it. He caught the last trolley. Bad luck to him. I'm going out in the back porch, lad. You get him to bed. Okay, he's got a tongue like an adder on him when he's drunk, and I'd only... I'd lose my temper. Mix on the loud noise. Oh, hello, kid. I'm as drunk as a fiddler's bitch. Thanks for telling me a great secret. Yeah. <laughs> Unnecessary information number one. <laughs> I had a serious accident. The front steps tried to trample on me. Took advantage of the fog to waylay me. Ought to be a lighthouse out there. It's dark in here, too. What the hell is this, the morgue? <laughs> Let's have some light on this subject. Ford, 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 oh, Kabul River. Ford, oh, Kabul River in the dark. Keep the crossing sticks beside you, and they will surely guide you across the Ford, oh, Kabul River in the dark. <laughs> That's more like it. Hell with old Gaspard. Where is the old tightwad? He's out on the porch. You can't expect us to live in the black hole of Calcutta! <laughs> Say, have I got the DTs? Oh my God, it's real. What's the matter with the old man? He must be ossified to forget he left this out. Well, grab opportunity by the forelock, key to my success. Oh, you're stinking now. That'll knock like your stiff. Oh, wisdom from the mouth of babes. Can the wise stuff, kid. You're still wet behind the ears. All right, all right. Pass out if you want to. I can't. <laughs> That's the trouble. <coughs> Had enough to sink a ship, but can't sink. Well, here's hoping. All right, show over the bottle. I'll have one. Oh, too. no, you don't. Not while I'm around. Remember doctor's orders? Maybe no one else gives a damn if you die, but I do. My kid brother, everything else is gone. You're all I've got left. So no booze for you if I can help it. Lay off it, Well, you don't think I care. I just drunken bull? All right, go ahead and kill yourself. <laughs> I know you care. I'm going on the wagon, but the night doesn't count. <laughs> Too many damn things have happened today. Well, here's how. I know. It's been a lousy day for you, kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet old Gaspard hasn't tried to keep you off booze. Probably give you a case to take with you to the state farm for pauper patients. The sooner you kick the bucket, the less expense. What a bastard there for a father. If you put him in a book, nobody would believe it. Papa's all right if you try to understand him and you keep your sense of humor. Oh, he's been putting on the old sob act for you, has he? Well, he can always kid you, but not me, never again. Although, in a way, I do feel sorry for him about one thing. But he even had that coming. He's to blame. Out of hell with that. That last drink's getting to me. This one ought to put the lights out. Oh, did you tell old Gaspard I got out of Doc Hardy? Yeah. This sanatorium is a charity camp? I told him I wouldn't go there. It's all settled now. He says I can go anywhere I want to. Within reason, of course. <laughs> of course, lad. Anything within reason. That means another cheap dump. <laughs> old Gaspard, the miser and the bells. Oh, That's a party you can play without stuff Oh, all right. Time. If you're satisfied, let him get away with it. It's your funeral. I mean, I hope it won't be. What'd you do uptown tonight? 
Did you go to Mamie Burns? Sure thing. Where else could I find suitable feminine companionship? <laughs> and love, don't forget love. What is a man without a good woman's love? A hollow shell. <laughs> You're a nut. <laughs> then turning to my love, I said, the dead are dancing with the dead. The dust is whirling with the dust. But she, she heard the violin and left my side and entered in love, passed into the house of lust. And suddenly the tune went false. The dancers wearied of the wa Well, that's not strictly accurate. <laughs> My love was with me. I didn't notice it. She must have been a ghost. Guess which one of Mamie's charmers I picked to bless me with her woman's love. It'll hand you a laugh, kid. I picked Fat Violet. <laughs> she wears a tongue. <laughs> Well, for a joke. No joke. Very serious. By the time I hit Mamie's dump, I felt very sad about myself, all the other poor bums in the world, ready for a weep on any old womanly bosom. You know how you get when John Barleycorn turns on the soft music in sight. Then as soon as I got in the door, Mamie began telling me all her troubles, beefed how rotten business was she was going to give Fat Vi at the gate. Customers didn't fall for Vi. Only reason she kept her on was she could play the piano. Lately, Vi'd gone on drunks and been too boiled to play with eating her out of house and home. And although Vi was a good-hearted dumbbell, she felt sorry for her because she didn't know how the hell she's going to make a living. Still, business was business, and she couldn't afford to run a home for fat tarts. <laughs> well, that made me feel sorry for Fat Violet. <laughs> so I squandered two bucks of your dough to escort her upstairs. With no dishonorable intentions, whatever. <laughs> I like him fat, but not that fat. All I wanted was a little heart-to-heart -heart talk concerning the infinite sorrow of life. Oh, poor Vi. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you gave her, gave her Kipling and Swinburne a little I've been faithful. Faithful to these and are in my fashion, <laughs> sure thing, with the old master John Barnacorn playing soft music. <laughs> she stood it for a while, then she got good and sore. Got the idea, I took her upstairs for a joke, gave me a grand bawling out. Said she was better than a drunken bum and recited poetry. Then she began to cry. So I had to tell her I loved her because she was fat. <laughs> she wanted to believe it, so I stayed with her to prove it. And that cheered her up a bit. And then she kissed me when I left and said she'd fall in hard for me. And then we cried a little more in the hallway and everything was fine. Except maybe Burns thought I'd gone bug house. <laughs> Harlots and hunted have pleasures of their own to give. The, the vulgar, vulgar herd can never understand. <laughs> oh, it was a hell of a good time, too. You should have stuck around with me, kid. <coughs> <coughs> Mamie Burns inquired after you. She was sorry to hear you were sick. She meant it, too. This night has opened my eyes to a great career in store for me, my boy. I shall give the art of acting back to the performing seals, which are its most perfect expression. By applying my natural, God-given talents in their proper sphere, I shall attain the pinnacle of success. I'll be the lover of the fat woman in Barnum and Bailey's circus. Hmm. Imagine me sunk to the fat girl in some hick town hooker shop. Me made some of the best lookers on Broadway sit up and beg. Speaking in general, I've tried them all. The happy roads that take you over the world. That's not so apt. Happy roads is bunk. Weary roads is right. Get you nowhere fast. This ride got nowhere. Where everyone lands in the end, even in most of the poor suckers won't admit. Okay, then, will you? He'll be crying in a minute. Don't you get too damn fresh. Oh, you're right. The hell was repining. Fat Violet's a good kid. I'm glad I stayed with her. Christian Act cured her blues. 
You should have stuck around with me. What's the sense in coming home to get the blues over what can't be helped? All over. Finished now. Not a hope. If I were to hang from my highest hill, mother o' oh mine, oh mother o' oh mine, I know whose love would follow me oh, still. You shut up. Where's the hop head on the tractors? <laughs> you don't know you're drunk, it's no excuse. It's good talking, you know me, kid. I don't know what my name is. I'm sorry, I hate you. That's okay, glad you did. My dirty tongue, I'd like to cut it out. I suppose it's because I feel so damn sunk. Because this time, Mama had me fooled. She always thinks I think the worst, but this time I believe the best. Well, I suppose I can't forgive her. Yet. It meant so much. I've begun to hope if she'd beaten the game, I could too. God, I oh, I've known about Mama so much longer than you, I'll never forget the first time I got wise. I caught her in the act with a hypo. Stop it, Jamie. Stop it. <laughs> I never believed before that any women but whores took dope. Shh. Now this stuff, you get in consumption, it's got me licked. We've been more than brothers. You're the only pal I've ever had. I love your guts, kid. I'd do anything for you. Oh, I know that, Jamie. Yet I bet you've heard Mama and old Gaspard spill so much bunk about my hoping for the worst. You suspect right now I'm thinking to myself, well, Papa's old. He can't last much longer. And if you were to die, Mama and I would get all he's got. Oh, no, so I'm probably hoping damn, you fool. would. What the hell put that in your mind? Don't be a dumb That's what I'd like to know. What, what I the hell put said. that in your mind? Always suspected of hoping for the worst. I've got so I can't help myself. Say what are you trying to do, accuse me. Don't you play the wise guy with me. I've learned more of life than you'll ever know. Just because you've read a lot of highbrow junk, don't think you can fool me. You're just an overgrown kid, Mama's baby and Papa's pet, the family white hope. You've been getting a swelled head lately about nothing. Oh, about a bunch of poems in a Hicktown newspaper? Hell, I used to write better stuff for the Lit magazine in college. You better wake up. You're setting no rivers on fire. You let Hicktown boobs flatter you with bunk about your future. Hell, kid, I don't mean that. That goes for Sweeney. No one is prouder that you've started to make good. Hell, why shouldn't I be proud? It's purely selfish. You reflect credit on me. I've had more to do with bringing you up than any... I wise you up about women so you'd never be a fall guy or making the mistakes you didn't want to make. Who stood you on to reading poetry first? Swinburne, for example, I did. Because I once wanted to write, I planted it in your mind that one day you'd write. Hell, you're more than my brother. I made you. You're my Frankenstein. All right. I'm your Frankenstein. Let's have another drink. I will, not you. We got to take care of you. Hey. Don't let the sanatorium business get you scared. Hell, you can beat that standing on your head. Six months, you'll be in the pink. You, <laughs> you probably haven't even got consumption at all. Doctors are a lot of fakers. Told me years ago to cut out booze or I'd soon be dead, and here I am. They're all con men. Anything to grab your dough. I'll, I'll bet this state farm is a political graph game. Doctors get a cut for every patient they send. You're the limit. At the last judgment, you'll be around telling everyone it's in the bag. And I'll be right. You slip a piece of change to the judge and be saved, but if you're broke, you can go to hell. Therefore, put money in thy purse. That's the only dope. It's the secret of my success. Look what it's got me. Listen, kid, you'll be going away. I. I may not get another chance to talk, or I, I might not be drunk enough to tell you the truth, so I got to tell you now. Something I ought to told you long ago, for your own good. Not drunken bull. 
But in vino veritas stuff, you better take it seriously. I want to warn you. Against me. Mom and Papa are right. I've been a rotten, bad influence, and the worst of it is I did it on purpose. Shut up, Next, did you listen to me? I did it on purpose to make a bum of you. Or part of me did a big part. The part that's been dead so long that it hates life. My putting you wise, you learn from my mistakes. I believe that myself at times, but it's a fake. I made my mistakes look good. I made getting drunk romantic. I made whores, fascinating vampires, instead of the poor, stupid, diseased slobs they really are. I made fun of work a suckers game. I never wanted you to succeed and make me look even worse by comparison. Wanted you to fail, always jealous of your mama's baby and papa's death. And it was your being born that started my on dope. I know it's not your fault, but on the same time, you, I can't help having your guts. Only don't get the wrong idea. I love you more than I hate you. My saying what I'm saying now proves that I run the risk you'll hate me and you're all I've got left. But I don't know why I said that last part. I didn't mean to go that far back. What I wanted to say is I'd like to see you become the greatest success in the world. But you better be on your guard. Because I'll do my damnedest to make you fail. I can't help it. I hate myself. I gotta take revenge on everyone else, especially you. Oscar Wilde's Reading Jail had the dope twisted. The man was dead, so he had to kill the thing he loved. That's what it ought to be. The dead part of me hopes you won't get well. Maybe he's even glad the game has got Mama again. He wants company. He doesn't want to be the only corpse around the house. Shut up, Jamie. Uh, Jamie, you're crazy. Well, you think you're... about it when you wake from in the oh, sanatorium. I mean, you make up your mind. You. You. You've I'm got to die of candy. You get me out of your life. Well, you think of being dead. Well, Tell people I had a brother, but well, he's dead. And well, when you come back, you look out for me. I'll be waiting to welcome you with that my old pal stuff and give you the glad hand and the first good chance I get. I'll stab you in the back! Only don't forget me. Remember I warned you for your sake. Give me credit. Greater love hath no man than this. Then he saveth his brother from himself. That's all. I feel better now. I've, uh, I've gone to confession. I, I know you absolve me, kid, don't you? You understand. You're a damn fine kid. Well, you ought to be. I made you. So you go on and get well. Don't die on me. You're all I've got left. God bless you, kid. <clears throat> oh, that last drink is the old K.O. <laughs> Thank God he's asleep. I thought he'd never stop talking. Leave him be, lad. Let him sleep it off. I heard the last part of his talk. That's what I've been warning you. I hope you will heed it, eh? Now it comes from his mouth. Don't be too downhearted, lad. <laughs> he loves to exaggerate the worst in himself when he's drunk. He is devoted to you. That's the one good thing left in him. What a sweet spectacle for me, my firstborn. The one that I had hoped would carry my name with honor, dignity, a waste. What a, a wreck, drunken hulk, over with, done, finished. Clarence has come. <laughs> False, fleeting, perjured Clarence that stabbed me in the field at Tewkesbury. Hey, look at my face, oh, you fool. My name is Might Have Been. I'm also called No More Too Late. Oh, I know what you're called, and I do not wish to look in that Oh, I got face. a great idea for you, Papa. Why don't you put on a revival of the bells this season? There's a great part of it you can play without makeup. Old Gasper the Miser. Shut up, Jamie. I claim Edwin Booth. Never saw the day when he could give as good a performance as a trained seal. Seals are intelligent and honest. They don't put up any bluff about the art of acting. Jimmy, go back to sleep. 
You shot your mouth off enough for one night. Get out of that face! Your face! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The mad scene and your Ophelia! Oh, your own mother! You will be out in the gutter in the morning, so help me God! play so badly now. I'm all out of practice. Sister Therese will scold me dreadfully. She'll tell me it's not fair to my father when he pays so much money for extra lessons. And she's quite right, it's not fair. He's so good and kind and generous, and he's so proud of me. I'll practice every day from now on. Something horrible's happened to my hands. The fingers have gotten so stiff. The knuckles are all swollen. They're so ugly. I'll have to go to the infirmary and show them to Sister Martha. Well, she's old and cranky, but I love her anyway, and she gets things in her medicine chest that'll cure anything. She can be something to rub in my hands and tell me to pray to the Blessed Virgin, and they'll be well again in no time. Mama. Well, let me see. Mama. What is it I came in here to find? What is, what, what is she wearing? What? It's a wedding gown. Oh, my God. A wedding gown oh. is very lovely, isn't it? Oh, I remember. I found it in the attic hidden in a trunk. But I don't know what I wanted it for. I, I, I'm going to be a nun. That, that, that is, if I could only find... No, oh, what is it I'm looking for? No, it's something I lost. It can't be lost altogether, no. No, oh, it's something I miss terribly. Something I need terribly. I remember when I had it, I was never afraid or lonely. I can't have lost it forever. I would die if I thought that, because then there'd be no hope. No, it isn't. It isn't in the summer cold of God's consumption. No! You must not touch me. You must not try to hold me. It isn't right when I'm hoping to be a nun. I had a talk with Mother Elizabeth. Oh, she's so sweet and good. I love her dearly. It may be sinful of me, but I love her better than I love my own mother. Because she understands everything even before you say a word. Oh, no. Can't keep secrets from her. Couldn't deceive her if you were mean enough to want to. All the same, I don't think she was so understanding this time. I told her I wanted to be a nun. I explained how sure I was of my vocation and that I had prayed to the Blessed Virgin to make me sure and find me worthy. And... And I told her I'd had a true vision when I was praying at that shrine of Our Lady of Lourdes on the little island in the lake. And I knew, I knew just as surely as I knew that I was kneeling there, that, that she'd smiled at me and blessed me with her consent. Mother said I had to be more sure than that even. I had to prove it wasn't simply my imagination. And, and if I was so sure, I wouldn't mind putting myself to a test by going home after I graduated and living like other girls live, going to dances and parties and, and enjoying myself. And, 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 and then in a year or two, if I still felt so sure, I could come back and we would talk again. I never dreamed Mother would give me such advice. I was really shocked. Of course, I told her I would do whatever she suggested, but I knew it was simply a waste of time. But after I left, I felt all mixed up, so I went back to the shrine, and I prayed to the Blessed Virgin, and, and I found peace again, because I, I knew she'd heard my prayer, and that she would always love me and see no harm ever came to me. So, so long as I never lost my faith in her. Who? Who? That was winter of senior year. And then in, in the spring, 
something happen to me? I remember. I fell in love with James Tyrone. I was so happy for a time. 